Hello everyone. In this session, I'm going to show you how we can create a Flask application using Python language. For that, what we need to do is first we need to create the main folder. Let me create it on the desktop and name it as Flask underscore login underscore logout application. See, this will be the main folder where I'm going to create this simple login logout application with user authentication. So let me just open this folder. So this is that folder location where we are going to create our app. So let me just grab this location and start a new command prompt. So in the new command prompt, I'm just going to navigate to that particular folder by typing CD and giving some space like this. Uh, let me just increase the screen size a bit and let's hit enter. So you'll be inside that particular folder. So first off, I want to install a virtual ENV software. So which is available to us from Python. So it is going to connect to the internet and it is going to download the software for us. Okay, if it is already installed, it is going to say requirements are satisfied like this. Now, using this uh, virtual environment, okay, I'm going to create a virtual uh, environment. Uh, let's env, let's call it as my env. So my virtual environment's name is my env. I have typed like this. See, as soon as I type this, okay, here one folder automatically got created that is called as my env when i open this we will be seeing the scripts folder and inside that scripts folder we will be having a file called as activate here this is the batch file which activates and just like that okay if you want to deactivate we'll we have another file called as deactivate okay so first what do we need to do is we need to activate our virtual environment which we have named it like this my env so my env uh, then go to that scripts folder scripts then use that activate batch file to activate your env okay uh, i think i have made some mistake it's saying uh, that uh, location is not found this path has not been specified properly so my env so let me try it once again my env backward slash scripts backward slash activate hit enter yes maybe i must have done some spelling mistake or something so if it is activated its name is going to appear here on the left side as indicating that we have activated our virtual environment which we have named it as my env so once after doing this okay please do not uh, close this command prompt and just minimize that one okay now this is the folder location in which we are creating our app. So now you need to copy this location and open any one of your editors where you would like to write the code. So I'm using Visual Studio Code. So let me first go to file and say open folder. And first you need to navigate to that particular folder like this where you have created this virtual environment. Then click on the select folder option and it is going to open up this location for us. This Flask login logout application and here is our virtual environment now here i'm going to create the main file of our application that is app.py you can name anything you want okay so the first thing what we are going to do is from class we are going to import we are going to import a class called as flask okay see guys as you are seeing right now there is a yellow color line just below this flask which means we have not installed the flask libraries which is required for this application and for this what we need to do we need to go back to our virtual environment okay from the command prompt and here we need to say pip install flask and all in small letters and hit enter now once when you do this it is going to directly connect to the internet and it is going to download all the flask necessary libraries and modules which are required for building of this particular application so once it is done so if you notice from here from the back end okay that yellow color line is gone and our problem is rectified so this is the first statement okay now why do we need to import this particular class is because this will help us see this uh, classes constructor is going to help us name our application so we are going to say underscore underscore name okay and i'm going to name my app as app itself so we have initialized or you can say instantiated our flask application as app okay and then now each and every app see our app 
is going to have a route R O U T E route for the starting page of the application that is going to be just the forward slash that's it and we need to create a function called as home uh, in order to say uh, we want to go to the home page of the application so we are going to say return uh, like this uh, in double quotes I'm going to use an h1 tag of the HTML h1 open and h1 close like this and I'm going to say like this this is the home page of the application like this okay so we have successfully created a home page for our app and now to run this app we need to have an if condition stating that if uh, the name of this application matches as the main module okay main files are okay then we need to run this app using the run function app dot run and if at all there is a error or anything we can open this uh, application in debug mode so we can say debug debug v u g debug equal to true okay so we have successfully created a web application which has a home page okay whose root whose route is just the forward slash and we can run this application and now in order to run this application you will have to go to terminal click on new terminal and in this terminal okay don't worry about these uh, warning messages at timing okay just type uh, python and uh, name of your file which you have kept that is app.py so here let me say app.py hit enter and it is going to give you this particular url you can just directly hold control and click on this link or you can just copy paste and put it in any one of the browsers which you are using so let me just click on this and it is going to open up the browser which i am using right now and it says home page over here okay so let me just make it into a two screen window so that uh, we can see the coding live like this okay so this is the home page of my application so let me just increase the size a little bit so that we can see the code properly so this is the page right now and here if i say like this okay uh, welcome to home page if i save it and if i refresh see it is going to show me like this and now since i'm going to be using a proper html page for this one to show the home page and everything okay what i'm going to do is here you will have to create a folder called as templates and inside the templates i want to create a new html file that will be called as home.html now this one i'll use the shift not symbol to write the entire uh, code of html and inside here let me write it in h1 okay this is the home page from uh, html page like this and now inside our app.py i will have i don't have to write this hard coded uh, text like this okay i just have to use a function called as render underscore template and here we'll have to mention that files name in double quotes or single quote you can use that is home.html okay and this function is not readily available uh, for us like how we use the route but it is available from flask library so we'll have to mention here at the top see from flask we are going to import a function called as render template and it is going to render a html template that is called as home.html for us okay now when i refresh this okay it says home page from an html page so this is how you are going to render your html pages now if you have css pages javascript pages and images and all those things okay you have to create a separate folder for that called as static and inside that static folder you can create a new file for your css files so let me put it as style.css and let's code in this one okay so for time being what i'll do uh, i'll just uh, say that uh, whatever is there in h1 tag okay make the text uh, okay text alignment in the center of the page okay and uh, the color of the text so let us change it to red color let's save it okay and now what we need to do is the style.css has to be linked inside the home.html page and that happens inside the head tag so i'll come to the head tag and i'll write the link tag okay and it is asking for href now i'm going to use the jinja syntax like this and here okay what i'm going to do i'm going to use the url underscore for function which is available for us from flask library first uh, here first uh, condition what we have to give is the folder which uh, contains uh, all the static files that is css file javascript files and all those things and uh, then the next uh, we have to mention the file name which file you want to 
uh, attach or link so my file name is style.css so let me write that file name equal to style style.css okay so this is how you link uh, your css file to your html file using url underscore for function so this function okay this function has to be imported in app.py here at the top from flask library as well like this url underscore for also we are using so now uh, when i refresh this page so as you can see our html code is getting applied and uh, two properties we had applied that one is the text has to be in the center of the page and another one is the text has to be in red color so this indicates that the style.css is successfully linked with home.html page now let me go back to app.py and since i have only one route okay you can have one more route for the home page as well if you want like this you can simply copy paste this route and say forward slash home okay see if anybody clicks like this okay if uh, if i go to my page refresh it and if i say uh, forward slash home then also we should get navigated to home page so this is one of the ways you can have multiple routes for the same page which you are trying to open okay now we have a route for the home page so just like this okay i want to create a route okay which may, takes me to the login page so i'll say uh, here as login okay i'm going to create one more function see like how we have created home i'll create a function called as login and it is going to render a template called as login.html so login.html like this and same way i want to create a route for registration page so let me just copy these three lines of code and here let me say it as register register will be the route and the function name also will be register and here it is going to register a html template called as register dot html okay and finally when you have to log out okay we'll have a route separately for that it will say log out route is log out and the function name also will keep it as log out okay and it is going to take you to the home page so here let me just make it as home page so whenever you click on the logout button it will directly come to this home page so this these are the uh, templates as you can see see now let us create those templates for us so let me click on uh, let me copy this login.html let's go to the templates folder and create a new file called as login.html and uh, let me use the shift not symbol of the visual studio code which writes the code for us and here let me make it in a h1 tag saying that this is the login page of the application like this and then again i'll go to the templates folder create a new file and uh, let's say register.html and then here use the shift not symbol again and here in h1 tag let me write it as register page let's save it okay and we are ready with our login page as well as the register page now i think uh, login page is also done register page is also done okay now we have our style.css now this is not required so let me just uh, remove it off okay let me save it and let's come back to app.py so we have home.html login.html and register.html pages ready with us okay now let's uh, refresh our page and see here let me go first is the home page so that is working perfectly fine then forward slash if i give login it should come to the login page like this and then finally if i say register and it should come to the register page like this okay and uh, then finally if i say log out okay it should come back to the home page so we have successfully created all the html pages which is required for us okay now what we need to do is okay we need to add a functionalities for this login logout and home page and that is the logout uh, links up okay for that what i'll do is i'll create a new file called as uh, layout.html okay this is going to be the main html file which will be having all the bootstrap and all those uh, uh, links attached to it okay so what I'll, i'm going to do is uh, when i go to this login login.html page i'm going to remove off all this code even from the register also i'm going to remove off all this code uh, let me save it okay right now there is no code in login.html as well as register.html i'm going to create a, an html file one html file layout.html which will be having all the html code and that will get applied to login page as well and the register page as well so what i'll do is i'll create a parent container okay a division which will have all the uh, components 
of our website so i'll say dot child dot child uh, i'll put it uh, i'll put a dollar symbol like this okay so this will be the common class name called as child and uh, child one child two child three like this so i'll be having a uh, uh, one two three six uh, child elements or let's say seven child elements i have okay so like this so uh, you can write the html code inside the uh, layout.html so we have a division okay so here for time being i'll just uh, make it as a header and then here uh, i'll simply put it as second heading and then uh, this will be uh, let's put something as a left content and a center content and then this will be the right and this will be the uh, let's say all uh, links section at the bottom and uh, finally we will be having a footer section at the end so we have our uh, layout page ready like this okay and this page okay see this division okay right now okay what i'm going to do is uh, i'm going to uh, link okay see when i had linked uh, uh, in login.html and register.html the css file okay i'm going to the same way link uh, the css file over here using the jinja syntax and the url underscore for function first we have to name the static folder that is the folder in which uh, the file name which i want to render is uh, style.css okay so let me just save it and this will be the main file of our application okay now since we don't have any router to go to this particular page okay i'll simply create one uh, a route for this one so that we can see the coding okay then we'll later on delete that page so not the page that router so simply if i say here layout okay it should come to the layout page by rendering layout.html layout.html like this okay for time being uh, let me just refresh the page and uh, here let me come to layout and uh, here this is the layout right now okay now let's come to our uh, main uh, style.css file and uh, let's design this particular page so first of all i have named everything inside the parent container so i'll say dot parent okay and uh, first of all let us put a border around this border one pixel solid black so that uh, we get to see the border around our this thing okay and all the child elements dot children all the children elements should have a background color okay uh, for time being we'll just put it as orange and we have orange color on all the child elements like this okay now what i'm going to do i'm going to say to the parent element display grid and in this grid template number of columns i want is three columns i want so i'll say one fractional unit three fractional units or let's say four fractional units fr and one fractional unit so we'll have three columns like this and let's refresh and we have got our three columns and then in this uh, grid hyphen template okay number of rows i want okay number of rows we have to decide how many we want so let's say five we have so five times i'll say auto 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 and auto and auto automatic okay automatic it should take the size of the rows uh, depending upon the content size which we have kept up okay and uh, let's give some gap in between the rows and columns so, so i'll say grid gap grid gap i say i'll say 10 pixels let's save it and let's uh, refresh the page and as you can see we have got uh, three columns and we have got five rows and since uh, uh, these three contents uh, are in the same row we are not seeing those last two rows uh, here so we'll make uh, this header take the entire uh, first row and all the columns together and that has to be done by targeting individual child elements so child one child two like this we have to target so first of all you will have to say grid hyphen column okay grid hyphen column which should take from one to four so you will have to say one forward slash four from one to three and four see this is how numberings will go one two three and four so first uh, child one should take the grid columns from number one to four and row number one to two so here i will say grid hyphen row 
should be from 1 forward slash 2. This will be the number for number of rows. See, if I save this and let's refresh our page, as you can see, the header section is taking up the entire row like this. Okay, and then I'll just have to copy this code six more times because we have six children. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, so one more time. So totally we have seven children and I'll just uh, name all the uh, classes like child 1, child 2, child 3, child 5, child 6 and child 7 and we'll have to mention the column number. So second, second one also should have uh, column number 1 to 4 and a row number from 2 to 3. Okay, so let me just make it as 2 to 3. Okay, then now coming to the left section. Left section should have a row number. Okay, row number 3 to 4. Okay, and column number 1 to 2. Okay, and then this uh, center section, okay, that also should have the same row number 3 to 4, but uh, row number from 2 to 3, like this, sorry, column number from 2 to 3, and then here, column number from 3 to 4, row number 3 to 4, like this, okay, so once when it is done, okay, we are coming to all links section and the footer section, okay, so all link section also should take from 1 to 4 column numbers and row numbers okay this time will be from 4 to 5 like this and then coming to the last footer which is child number 7 okay columns should be from 1 to 4 and row number should be from 5 to 6 okay so when I save this and let's refresh our page okay so we have got our HTML layout ready with us okay so this is how I have built my layout okay so now uh, let's uh, just remove this uh, border this border is not required okay let's save it and uh, let's refresh the page and this is how my layout is going to look like okay and uh, later on we are going to remove this orange color background also from all the child elements so our html layout is done okay now let's make this uh, mobile compatible okay so let's make this fully mobile compatible by using at the rate media screen Okay, and here I'll mention the width. You have just have to use like it, uh, like a parenthesis. Okay, and we here we have to use max hyphen width property, saying that if it becomes less than uh, let's say 600 pixels, if the screen size becomes less than uh, 600 pixels, okay, the parent element which is displaying as itself as a grid. See, let me just copy the whole code and paste over here, and see let it let it display as grid itself. But instead of having three columns like this, okay, let's have only one column of one fraction unit okay so one one column it will become okay and number of rows one two three four five six seven i want seven rows this time okay how many child elements are there that many rows i want so one two three four five and here i'll put auto auto once again okay so totally seven rows i have put okay and grid gap let it be 10 pixels okay so as soon as it becomes less the screen width becomes less than 600 pixels okay but now what we'll have to do is we'll have to Tell all the child elements. Okay, so let me just grab all the child elements like this: child one, child two, child three, child six, and child seven. Okay, and all the column numbers. Okay, all the column numbers now. Okay, I'll hold the Control D option. So all the column numbers will be from one to two. So you can change something like this, and then each and every each and every child should come one below the other. So one to two, two to three, like this. So three to four, and this will be four to five. Then this will be 5 to 6 and this will be 6 to 7 and this will be 7 to 8. Okay, all the children rows will be from 1 to 8. So let me just refresh. So as you can see, this has become below one another. Okay, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4 like this and 1 to 2 is the column numbers. So if I increase the screen size, see as till here it is like a Le greater than 600 pixels see as soon as it becomes less than 600 pixels all the child elements will come one below each other so we have successfully made it like mobile compatible version of our app okay so this okay this whole code okay what i'm going to do i'm going to import or you can say extend to login.html as well as register.html as well okay and in uh, layout.html okay in this uh, center okay that will be the main uh, section okay so what i'll do i'll just uh, simply create a block using uh, 
this uh, syntax like a percentage symbol we have to say and uh, we have to name our block see i am just creating a block called as a center center main okay because this will be the main section of my particular website where i'll be coding everything and here we will have to end this block called as center main okay it is not mandatory that we have to name but it is understandable that uh, this uh, block which i have opened here it closes here that's it okay so this is going to be the template okay now in the header section what i'll do i'll just uh, come here okay let's save this file okay right now i have just removed that header portion see if i refresh this that header is gone okay that header is gone because we don't have any content over here okay but now what i want to do is i just want to grab uh, some uh, bootstrap link so i'll go to the getbootstrap.com website okay getbootstrap.com website we have to go uh, just click on the documents and uh, you are going to see the bootstrap uh, coding like this and here you are going to get a link a css link uh, which you have to copy and when you uh, you have to just come to your um, html code and uh, layout.html and put it inside the head tag over like this so this is the css uh, file from bootstrap okay and then uh, you can see a script tag here okay you, you can see a script tag you just have to copy that and you will have to put it inside the body tag just before closing the body tag okay just like this okay and uh, for additional uh, features uh, for javascript features and all those things we have two more links uh, script tags you can copy that also and let's come to our visual studio code and paste it over here okay but here you will have to maintain a sequence of okay you will have to maintain a sequence that see this bootstrap.min.js file see this script tag has to be uh, the first link okay just i'll come above this and i'll just paste it over here so uh, first i'll say bootstrap.min.js and then bundle.min.js and then popper.min.js okay so follow this sequence so now let me save it and we have successfully linked our bootstrap file okay links to our html pages so if i just refresh this as you can see uh, the content has a little bit changed okay the styling the font size okay the font uh, type also it has been changed a little bit okay just by adding the links as well okay now what I, what i'll do is i'll just go to uh, my bootstrap uh, this one layout.html and here inside the child one okay that is the main uh, uh, child which shown gets shown at the top so what i'll do i'll just uh, use a nav bars okay i'll just type nav bars and uh, this this is a nav bar and uh, let's just copy the entire code and let's put it over here in our visual studio code so here in child one i'll just copy paste the entire code like this and let's save it okay uh, i don't want a uh, drop down uh, let me just maximize the screen so that you can see the code properly uh, let me just go here and uh, see this is the entire navigation bar okay nav bar which we have just copied from there okay this disabled link i don't want i'll just remove it off okay and uh, this uh, drop down list uh, li item also i don't want so i'll just remove it off okay so let's save it and uh, let's check out our, our website right now so let me go back and let's refresh okay so we have our navbar over here home link is there and we have a search button uh, which we can use later on but we have successfully created our navbar then let's say uh, we go back to our visual studio code okay and uh, in child 2 okay see this is the second heading uh, where i have written second heading okay i don't want uh, a second heading or anything but uh, i'll simply say uh, that this child 2 has uh, two child components uh, let's say uh, h1 okay let's say in h1 i have uh, the page whatever page it is okay so it should say that particular page okay so here uh, let me just simply say it like this uh, uh, page i'll simply say it like a page and here uh, let's say ha i have a paragraph uh, where i'm going to display the username okay so uh, simply for time being i'll just say user and hyphen okay like this okay and let's uh, save this and let's go back to our website and check out okay and if i refresh this see instead of second heading i'm getting this uh, page whatever page you are on and uh, the user here i will be showing the user who, have, who has logged in but here one thing i want is a page name i want on the left side and this user i want it here on the right side so for that what i'll do is i'll say this uh, 
to the child division okay this child 2 itself i'll add a bootstrap class name called as display flexor so that is d hyphen flex okay and when i save it uh, both of them as you can see will be appearing in the same line see let me just refresh it and both of them are coming next to each other now what i need to do is i need to make a, a space in between them okay and make this user variable here on the right side so i'll come back to my visual studio code and here i'll say like this justify hyphen content hyphen between now let me save it and let's go back to our page and let's refresh it and as you can see page name is on the left side and here the username it will be on the right side okay now let me do one thing uh, let's come here and add a, one more bootstrap class name that is called as container okay not container hyphen fluid just the container okay what it will do is it will put a gap between the left side and the right side of the page so let me just refresh see as you can see here we have got our page correctly okay now this is what we have to do for the rest of the pages and see for the time being left we uh, will leave it like that itself and for the right side also we'll just leave it like that and uh, 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 what we will do is uh, we'll come to um, uh, we'll say list okay basic list items are there like this and uh, we'll say we'll see the one with uh, the links okay see these are the links and it is like this uh, i'll use i'll use this one okay so it looks like this and uh, we'll later on add uh, the list the links to that okay so this looks uh, much better so let me just grab this and let's go to our uh, layout.html file and uh, in the left section see here here is the division uh, which says child 3 and the left section right here instead of left uh, let's put that list items like this okay and here the ul okay ul is the one which has all the list items like this and uh, let's save it and let's check out our html page how it looks so let's come back here and let's refresh so as you can see we have put the list over here list of items which we have put over here okay then let's come to uh, the center section okay and right side section also is there okay for time being what i'll do is uh, i'll not put anything uh, inside the right section i'll not put in anything inside the right section okay and the bottom section is there but uh, we'll uh, see about that later and here what i'll do all link section the last but one footer okay that also and here the final footer also i'll keep on paragraph saying that uh, copyright okay and we'll put a copyright symbol also by putting ampersand copy semicolon okay belongs to ecodrs bangalore okay so this should be fine and uh, here for this uh, paragraph or uh, this entire child division itself okay i will say background color pg hyphen uh, let's put it let's put it as light itself and uh, text hyphen center so let's save it and here okay just before this child six okay the final footer before this okay what we will do is we will uh, go to bootstrap.com and uh, just type here navs okay we will get navs like this okay it's not a nav bar we'll just get navigation links okay and this looks much better because it's in the center of the page already so let me just grab this one and uh, let's go to our visual studio code and put it here in the child six elements child six division you can say okay and uh, this disabled one is not required so i'll remove all that bootstrap class name and uh, we'll say href equal to something like this okay and inside this one see right now it is not going anywhere so we'll just put it as hash and instead of saying like this okay we'll just put it as link okay so we have link and here also i'll just make it as link and we don't have to have the active current page and all those things so i'll just remove those uh, bootstrap class names which are inbuilt available from bootstrap so let's go to our website and let's refresh the page and let's see 
okay so we have successfully created our links here at the bottom and here we have the final footer and uh, so we just need to do these pages right now okay the center section and the right sections we don't have any content okay uh, so it's coming up like this okay so now if you, if we want okay what we can do is uh, we can let's go back to the visual studio code and uh, since uh, i had put uh, the container uh, class name okay so container class name is here so let me just uh, remove off this and let's uh, simply say margin okay on all the sides okay let there be like three pixels of margin on all the sides so that uh, that gap becomes a little bit uh, smaller so here and uh, we get a little bit of margin on all the four sides so let's refresh this page oh, this this is much better than the previously okay so this is much better now and now let's come to this uh, child tree element which is the left side section okay and this left side section also uh, let's put it a margin of uh, let's say three pixel okay and here the entire uh, unordered list i'll just make it uh, come in the text should be in the center of the page and i'll just put the margin also of three pixels for the center and as well as the right side section that is the child file okay so right now we don't have any content uh, here in center and right but it's okay so we can just save it and uh, let's check out so if i refresh so as you can see we have got a little bit of margin on each and every side and uh, this one okay it does not have uh, any kind of border on any side so what I'll do is um, this child 4, child 5 and uh, all the other items, uh, child 3, okay. So let's put uh, the border by giving a border property like this and uh, this one also, child 4 also, let's give a border and here also let's give a border but I want to give border a very light color so let me just put it as border underscore light hyphen light, border hyphen light. For child 4 also done, child 3 also done. Uh, border hyphen light, and let me just copy this and uh, let me give that same uh, border for uh, the right side content. Border light is there. Okay, border here also. Okay, now let's save it and uh, let's check out our website. So, um, I don't think uh, that border uh, has appeared uh, that much but it's okay we can just make out a little bit of difference and uh, let's do one thing or uh, uh, let's go to the style.css and uh, let us remove that background color property from all the children's like this okay and uh, now let's uh, check out our website uh, but before that uh, just let's come into the layout.html and uh, only for our understanding purpose uh, we will just simply write uh, here as uh, the right section or IGHT right section so that we come to know what exactly is going on and uh, center let it be uh, totally empty for right right now so let's come to our website and check out the properties okay so this is how our page is looking right now okay so this is how our page is looking right now and uh, instead of uh, border light uh, let me just make it as a uh, dark so that uh, we get a dark color uh, border so it is easier to identify border hyphen dark let me save it and let's go and check out our website okay so if i refresh this as you can see we have got our uh, layout ready with us okay now all we need to do is we need to start making the links to go back go to the that particular pages and every page should have these things ready with us okay so this is how you are going to start your application by making all the layouts ready for us okay so now what you have to do is see you have created a layout.html page okay and for that we have created a route called as layout.html which is absolutely not required so i'm just going to delete that route okay delete that route okay and then now what you have to do is see you have created a layout.html and it should get extended to all the html pages of your application that home.html, register.html and login.html for that what you have to do you have to use this syntax and you have to say extends extends is a keyword in order to extend that particular layout and that you have to mention here in the double quotes okay html code always in double quotes 
so you have to say layout.html that's it okay and if you just do this and let's copy this and put it in register.html as well and in home.html as well you don't have, have to do this remove of this and put it over here okay let's save this file okay now login.html register.html and home.html all three of them are ready and app.py okay and now here we don't uh, please note that there was uh, a router to go to layout page now there is no router layout.html does not have any route to go to that particular page we just have routes for login page register page and home page now let me save the app.py file okay and let me uh, come here uh, let me just close all of this okay and static folder and the templates folder right now templates folder has home layout login and register now let's come to our website okay when i refresh this will go away okay it will say ruler is not found because we have just removed that router but if i go to the home page okay you will be able to see this is the home page of the application which looks exactly like layout.html page layout.html page then if i say login okay so this will be the login page and then here if i say register okay this is the register page okay see this is how we have extended that particular layout to all the other pages of our application like this okay using the extends keyword and extending the layout.html page okay now what i'm going to do is see here in layout.html where i had uh, mentioned uh, that this this is the page name and this is the user okay i'm going to remove this page name from here okay i don't want i don't want that uh, name to appear over here okay here uh, i i'm i'm just going to remove that uh, name also as well okay see after the link see after the child 3 okay after child 3 we have our main division okay we have the main division that is the center center block so what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy the center block okay that is we have center main what is whatever the name you have kept okay you just have to copy those two lines okay come to login.html and put it over here and here is where i'm going to mention okay here is go where i'm going to mention uh, let's say in h3 or something or uh, let's say h4 okay in h4 uh, i'll say this is the login page okay this is the login page of the application like this okay now the same thing i'm going to copy and come to register page and paste it over here and i'll just name this as register page that's it and now let's come to the home page and do the exact same thing paste it over here and you just have to say this is the home page of the application now let me save this and let's go back to layout.html and save this page save this page like this okay now what we need to do see here we have this right section okay in this right section i'm going to mention the username okay but we'll do that later but first uh, let's go to our website and check out the uh, progress now okay see if i refresh this okay if i refresh this this child 2 element is not present over here anymore this is child 1 child 2 this is child 3 child 4 this is child 4 okay this is the center section and we have our registration page like this okay and this is the right section and we have the nav bar and uh, sorry we have the navs and we have the final footer like this now let me just go back to the login page from the route itself login okay and it will say we are in the login page as well okay then let's come to the home page just by putting forward slash hit enter it will come to the home page or we can come to the home page by putting forward slash and typing home as the route itself because we have two routes for the home page so this is how we are done with the layout design of our application okay then now we need to add functionalities okay first uh, let us add the links over here okay links to come to the home page links to come to the login page register page even the logout page so let's go to our visual studio code okay and now uh, we are in layout.html file and here at the top where we have created this nav bar okay see here are the links one is for the home page one is for the link okay and we have just ended the ul tag over here ul starts here and ul ends here so just like this so see uh, here where it says uh, nav bar okay i'll simply put it as eco drs okay see anybody clicks on the name of the application okay it will come to this uh, name here okay but instead of ecoders let's say uh, ecoders login 
hyphen logout hyphen application okay so this is the application name and it, it is very long name so what i'll do just say login logout login logout that's it okay login logout is there okay and then uh, we have uh, a link over here which says href okay so what i'll do this is the Jinda syntax when you use double curly braces okay inside this one okay inside this one you are going to say that you want to navigate to that particular page okay so here you will have to use the url underscore for function okay and here you have to mention the function's name so i'll mention the home okay because in an app.py okay to come to the home page the function name is home which will render me home.html page okay and just like this let's come to layout.html and this code okay this code i'm going to copy and put it over here also the exact same thing which takes me to the home page okay then this link is there i want to go to the login page so here i'll say login and here instead of this href1 okay i'll just put that code and here the function name which is login and then just like this only okay i need to create two more routes one for register and one for logout button so here let me just say register okay and here let i will say this one has register okay that is the function name then to come to the logout page they will have to click on this link called as logout okay and here the function name logout let's save it and we have successfully created the links as well for our application so let's come back to our website and check out let's refresh the page so here it says login logout and this is the home link login page register page logout page logout page directly navigates you to the home page itself so let me be on register page and let's now click on this main name which we have named it as login logout application so let me just click on this and we'll be on the home page let's come to register page let me click on the home link and we'll be on the home page itself okay then login page register page logout page okay so we have successfully created our links as well now what i'll do is see since we are not yet logged in logged out or uh, registered or anything like that okay not even if you come to home page also this side uh, this left side and right side is not required so for time being what i'll do is i'll just go to our uh, visual studio code and uh, in layout.html uh, this uh, left and right sections are there okay see this is the left section see here this is the child tree and uh, for time being i'll just uh, comment out this comment out this portion okay we'll use that later and uh, we want the center center one so that is the child four and uh, this child five which uh, we have written as right okay that also i'll just comment it off that also i'll comment it off and uh, this border okay that border is not required so what i'll do i'll just remove of that that was for only our understanding purpose that uh, we have created uh, a, a border dark color border uh, sections like that okay so we'll just uh, keep a very light color border like this okay but right now we don't have any content on the left side and the right side so let me just save the page and uh, uh, let me just go to back to the website and just refresh okay so as you can see we have got a little bit of a border on all these uh, these two okay so what i'll do is i'll just go here and uh, i'll just remove this uh, border from child 3 as well okay and child 5 as well okay now let me save it and uh, this uh, okay this only the center section okay only the center section has little bit of water so let's go to the website and let's refresh okay so those two are gone right now okay so we are in the home page right now okay and let's come to the login page so we are in the login page so every page is going to look like this right now okay later on when we come to when the user actually logs in and then he goes to the dashboard page and we can show all those uh, links and as well as the right side contents which we want to them okay then now let's come to the designing of uh, each and every page like this so first of all let me come to the login page and here after saying login page okay let's uh, put a horizontal line like this so we'll use an hr tag okay so that is done so let me just uh, quickly grab this and put it here in all the pages like this so home page is like this and done okay now let's come to the login and register functions okay so first of all uh, i'll just close this this is not required anymore so here we have our app.py okay so first uh, a person has to register okay first a person has to register uh, using a proper username and password 
So now what we have to do is first uh, let's come to register.html page and after this uh, horizontal line, okay, after the horizontal line in the center section, okay, what we are going to do is we are going to create a form. Okay, so for that, uh, let's go to our uh, bootstrap.com website and let's uh, type in form or forms. Okay, it's going to give you a simple layout like this. Okay, I like this one. Uh, so what I'll do, I'll just uh, copy this entire form and uh, let's paste it inside our uh, register.html page like this. Okay, so we have successfully copied pasted one form from that. Okay, since I don't want a checkbox, so this division which says check me out, uh, that I will remove it off. Okay, that I don't want. Okay, and here inside the submit button, I'll say register button. Okay, so there is a register button, uh, which is a uh, button primary. But instead of that, I will say button outline, okay, hyphen SUCC ESS. Okay, the, it will be a, like a group, a green color uh, border. But when I hover on that, it will become a totally a green color button. Okay, then we have a division, okay, in which we have an input field called as input type equal to password. And for this compulsorily, we'll have to keep a name. I'll keep the name as password itself. So our uh, password field is done. And just like this only, okay, just like this only, uh, here there is a, another input field which says input type equal to email but I'll just remove this and paste that password thing once again and uh, this line is not required uh, which says uh, will not share your email id and all those things and uh, see input type equal to password I'll just change it to text because I want to see the username typed and the name for this input field I'll keep it as uh, username okay so this is the uh, input fields uh, which I have created okay now in order to show this form to us we will have to put an action parameter here at the top saying that uh, action parameter will be the forward slash route that is register okay here it is the route name not the function name and we have to mention the method as well okay mention the method as uh, let's say post when we are inserting some values into the database which we usually use post when we are uh, requesting uh, some parameters from the database when that time we use get method Okay, so method used is post. Now, what we have to do is we have to come back to app.py and here the register route. Okay, here we have to put a comma and we have to say the methods allowed for this one. Okay, for this route is like this. We can use a list and say post is also allowed and even we can say get is also allowed. So that's why we have used the list. Okay, now as soon as this function starts, okay, as soon as this function starts, we have to check like if the requested method okay request dot method okay is it post or not or post or get like that okay now this request method okay this request uh, keyword or you can say method also is not readily available that we will have to import it from the flask library like this okay then this will be available for us okay and if if it is a uh, post then what we need to do is we need to request uh, the username and password from the html file okay see let me just uh, uh, go back to our uh, website and now we are in inside the login page right now okay now if i say like this register uh, okay we have to come to the register page but we will not come because uh, we have not uh, completed the code as of yet okay we are going to see lots of errors like this okay but if the request method is post okay first what i'll do is i'll take the username okay I'll request okay using the request itself from the form okay the name which I kept is as username okay and same way password also okay I'll request okay q u e s t from the form okay whose name we have kept it as password only okay and once it is done okay uh, what I'll do is I'll uh, just uh, uh, say uh, you will have to connect to database and insert this value into the database okay so here I'll say uh, like this. Uh, first, uh, if the request method is post, okay, get these two values, and uh, we'll store them in two variables called as username and password. Okay, so once it is done, okay, we will have to write an SQL query, okay, SQL query to insert these two values, these two values inside the database table, okay, inside the database table. Okay, then after inserting the values, okay, if they are successfully registered means here only we will say return them, okay, return them to the next page uh, using the redirect function, 
okay which uses url underscore for function and we'll make them go to the login page so we'll have to write the functions name over here okay so here this is also a library which is required for us from the flask library so we'll import here at the top so now once uh, this is done okay now the only thing uh, left for us to do is we have to create a database where we can insert these two values and register our users so what we'll do is we'll create a file over here just next to this app.py itself we'll create a new file okay called as a uh, data database.py okay database.py okay and in this location only i want to create a database okay in this location so what i'll do i'll just uh, right click and say reveal in file explorer see it is going to open up this file location like this and uh, this is the location see this is the location where i want to create a database so what i'll do is i i will have to open a new command prompt okay i'll have to open a new command prompt so let me just open up a new command prompt like this okay and first of all, we'll have to navigate to that particular folder and now we'll have to say sqlite i'm using sqlite 3 okay and the database which we i want uh, is called as a employee employee -E. okay employee.db okay see this is the database i want to create so now when i hit enter okay it will automatically create the database for us okay and in this one i want i'll create a table C -R -E -A -T, create a table okay called as users okay in which uh, i want the id of the user okay to be an integer type of value okay which is going to be the primary key of the application and it auto increments itself auto increments then the username i want is where care because since it is a text field of let's say 100 characters and it is going to be not null means it is it has to be compulsorily given and then the password field okay password field has to be a where care because it will be a string type and it also i'll put it as uh, not null itself okay now let's uh let's put a comma and uh, let's say uh, we have the id field username field and the password field and uh, let's say uh, whether uh, he is uh, an admin of this application or not okay see for the admin field okay for the admin field what i'll do i'll just say uh, that can be uh, like a let's say boolean value okay that can be like a boolean value okay whether he is an admin or not or a normal user okay so like this uh, let me just close this semicolon at the last and hit enter and we have successfully created the users table as well okay so now we have a users table and where this particular person okay if he is not the admin he is a normal user of the application that's it okay so we have successfully created our database that is called as employee db okay and inside that employee db we have number of tables is that is users that's it okay you can check out by giving like this dot tables it will show you that you have only one table called as users and uh, if i say select star from user semicolon hit enter and it is not going to show any details because we have not inserted any uh, of the users right now okay so now you can close this uh, command prompt and as you can see we have got that particular database over here okay now right click on this like reveal in file explorer and copy this particular location okay so this is the location where your database has been created okay now let's come to the database.py and since i'm using sql3 we'll have to import sql3 as the module which will connect to the database so i'll say sql3 okay please connect okay please connect to this particular database which is present in this particular location and by putting forward slash you will have to mention the uh, database name employee.db okay and change all the backward slashes to forward slashes like this and uh, let me just put it over here uh, here like this and like this okay but uh, instead of writing this code again and again what i'll do i'll just create a function called as connect to database okay connect to database i'll create a function like this and i'll keep this inside the indentation of this particular function like this and i'll just name it as a variable sql okay this sql variable is what is going to get connected to the database like this okay which is present in this particular location okay now what you are going to do is see you are going to take this sql underscore uh, like this uh, there is a function okay there is a function called as factory 
ओके एस क्यूल फैक्ट्री और नॉट एस क्यूल फैक्ट्री इट इज कॉल्ड एज रो फैक्ट्री रो अंडर स्कोर फैक्ट्री ओके दिस विल टेक द एंटायर एस क्यूल एट थ्री एंड गिव ऑल द थिंग्स रो वाइज लाइक दिस एंड वंस यू हैव गॉट ऑल द रोज ओके यू जस्ट हैव टू रिटर्न दिस एस क्यूएल वेरिएबल विच यू हैव जस्ट कनेक्टेड टू दैट्स इट ओके एंड देन विल क्रिएट अ फंक्शन सेपरेटली कॉल्ड एज गेट द डेटा बेस ओके गेट डेटा बेस विच वी हैव कनेक्टेड टू लाइक दिस एंड फॉर दिस ओके फॉर दिस वी विल नीड वन ग्लोबल वेरिएबल ओके विल नीड अ ग्लोबल वेरिएबल विच इज कॉल्ड एज जी एंड इफ आई से लाइक दिस दैट वेरिएबल विल हैव टू इम्पोर्ट इट फ्रॉम द फ्लास्क लाइब्रेरी सो विल से फ्रॉम फ्लास्क इम्पोर्ट ओके इम्पोर्ट दैट ग्लोबल रेफरेंस वेरिएबल फ्रॉम फ्लास्क ओके फ्रॉम फ्लास्क लेट्स इम्पोर्ट द ग्लोबल रेफरेंस वेरिएबल विच इज कॉल्ड एज जी ओके नाउ हियर इन एन इफ कंडीशन इफ आई से इफ इट हैज एन एट्रीब्यूट सी दैट जी इफ इट हैज एन एट्रीब्यूट कॉल्ड एज एम्प्लॉय डी बी एम्प्लॉई अंडर स्कोर डी बी ओके इफ इट हैज एन वेरिएबल ओके देन इट नीड्स टू रिटर्न अस दैट वेरिएबल आर इट यू रिटर्न लेट से टू द जी दैट यू हैव टू गिव अस दैट एम्प्लॉई डेटा बेस एम्प्लॉई अंडर स्कोर डी बी वेरिएबल ओके बट इफ इट डज नॉट हैव सी इफ इट हैज इट विल गिव बट इफ इट डज नॉट हैव दैट वेरिएबल देन इट नीड्स टू सी देन इट नीड्स टू कनेक्ट टू द डेटा बेस टू गेट दैट वेरिएबल ओके सी से जी दिस एम्प्लॉई डेटा बेस एम्प्लॉई अंडर स्कोर डी बी ओके यू कैन गेट इट बाई कनेक्टिंग ओके टू दिस पर्टिकुलर डेटा बेस विच वी हैव क्रिएटेड अ फंक्शन ओवर हियर एट द टॉप ओके एंड देन फाइनली दिस फंक्शन ओके दिस फंक्शन गेट डेटा बेस विल गिव मी दैट वेरिएबल ओके दैट एम्प्लॉय डेटा बेस वेर वी आर ट्राइंग टू कनेक्ट टू ओके नाउ लेट्स सेव दिस वन एंड अवर डेटा बेस कोडिंग इज ऑल्सो रेडी फॉर अवर एप्लीकेशन नाउ ऑल वी नीड टू डू इज वी नीड टू हैव दिस पर्टिकुलर फंक्शन ओके दिस पर्टिकुलर फंक्शन इम्पोर्टेड फ्रॉम दिस फाइल दैट इज कॉल्ड एज डेटा बेस डॉट पी वाई हियर इन एप डॉट पी वाई फाइल हियर एट द टॉप सी लाइक दिस वी हैव टू मैंशन फ्रॉम डेटा बेस दैट इज द फाइल नेम डेटा बेस पी वाई वी नीड टू इम्पोर्ट ओके दिस पर्टिकुलर फंक्शन नेम दैट इज कॉल्ड एज गेट डेटा बेस ओके वी आर गोइंग टू गेट कनेक्टेड टू ए डेटा बेस लाइक दिस ओके एंड नाउ हियर वेन यू आर ट्राइंग टू रजिस्टर ओके वेन यू आर ट्राइंग टू रजिस्टर ओके वेन दिस फंक्शन रनस वेन यू आर गोइंग टू से रिक्वेस्ट डॉट मेथड इक्वल टू पोस्ट ओके फर्स्ट थिंग फर्स्ट थिंग वॉट यू आर गोइंग टू डू इज यू आर गोइंग टू कलेक्ट द इन्फॉर्मेशन फ्रॉम द फॉर्म एस टी एम एल फॉर्म सी आई से कलेक्ट द इन्फॉर्मेशन फ्रॉम द एच टी एम एल फॉर्म लाइक दिस सो आफ्टर गेटिंग दोज टू ओके यू विल हैव टू कनेक्ट ओके कनेक्ट टू डेटा बेस ओके कनेक्ट टू डेटा बेस एंड हाउ वी आर गोइंग टू कनेक्ट टू डेटा बेस आई विल जस्ट क्रिएट ए वेरिएबल लाइक दिस एंड कॉल द गेट डेटा बेस फंक्शन लाइक दिस ओके सो वी हैव सक्सेसफुली कनेक्टेड टू अ डेटा बेस राइट नाउ ओके एंड देन वॉट वी नीड टू डू वी नीड टू राइट एन एस क्यूल क्वेरी यूजिंग दिस पर्टिकुलर वेरिएबल ने विच यू हैव कैप्ट राइट ओवर हियर सो डी बी डॉट ई एक्स ई सी यू टी एक्जीक्यूट इज द फंक्शन विच विल बी राइटिंग इन विच विल बी राइटिंग द एस क्यूल स्टेटमेंट सो इन ऑर्डर टू इंसर्ट और रजिस्टर ए न्यू वैल्यू ओके इंसर्ट द टेबल सो वी आर गोइंग टू यूज इंसर्ट इन टू द यूजर्स टेबल ओके एंड हियर वील हैव टू मैंशन द यूजर नेम कॉलम एज वेल एज द पासवर्ड कॉलम इन द इंसर्ट द डेटा बेस एंड वैल्यूज हियर वील हैव टू से दिस यूजर नेम एंड पासवर्ड इज करेंटली द क्वेश्चन मार्क एंड क्वेश्चन मार्क ओके एंड हियर आफ्टर द डबल कोर्स वील हैव टू पुट इट एज ए लिस्ट और एट अल सेंग दैट द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन मार्क ओके फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन मार्क इज गोइंग टू बी दिस पर्टिकुलर यूजर नेम विच द यूजर हैज एंटर्ड ओके एंड दिस सेकेंड क्वेश्चन मार्क इज गोइंग टू बी द पासवर्ड विच दिस यूजर हैज एंटर्ड लाइक दिस ओके एंड वंस यू हैव रिटर्न द क्वेरी सक्सेसफुली यू नीड टू ओके मेक द चेंजेस परमानेंट ओके यू हैव टू मेक द चेंजेस परमानेंट इन द डेटा बेस टेबल सो इन ऑर्डर टू डू दैट वील यूज डी बी डॉट कमिट फंक्शन सी वेन एवर यूर अपडेटिंग इंसर्टिंग और मेकिंग सम चेंजेस ओके इंसर्टिंग अपडेटिंग एंड डिलीटिंग ओके वी नीड टू यूज दिस पर्टिकुलर फंक्शन ओके टू मेक ऑल द चेंजेस परमानेंट ओके एंड वंस वेन इट इज डन 
okay you are directly going to take that particular user to the login page okay so that's why we are redirecting them to the login page by using the redirect function okay now let me save this and let's check out if we can successfully register this particular person or not okay now let's go to the website okay and let's first refresh the page okay and if we have saved the file while making the changes okay we will get like this and then it automatically stops our server okay if automatically stops our server like this okay so now what we'll do is we need to just restart our application one more time okay you'll get back this link okay now you can go back to your page and you can refresh and you'll get back to your page like this okay now let's come to the register page and where you can see your form okay and this form okay it is fully touching uh, the corners of this particular page so what i'll do is i'll just uh, come back here and let's go to the, our register.html page and this form okay this form okay i'll add a bootstrap class name called as margin on all the sites let's say we have uh, some five pixels okay five pixels of margin on all the sites let's save it and here it says email id instead of email id i'll say username okay username and here it says password that is perfectly fine okay and uh, the label here i don't think we need uh, for example because it's an id over here and that is what uh, here it says it's okay for timing we'll keep it just like that okay now let's come back to our website and let's uh, refresh the page and as you can see we have got five pixels of margin on all the sites okay now all we need to do is register okay using a username and password so let me say eco drs equal to is the username and password is one two three four now when i click on register okay if it is not taking me to a login page or if it is showing some kind of an error okay we have we have some operational error if it says near value syntax error okay if i just click on this okay see this line will be highlighted like this okay see this line is highlighted okay here it says value okay it's saying value at line number 25 which we have made it in app.py in register okay in register router okay see it's not value it is values so i have done a small spelling mistake over that so let's go to line number 25 in app.py so let's come to app.py line number 25 so it's values like this so let's save it and then it has restarted saying it has it at the starts and our debugger is also active and whatnot and let's come to our page and let's go back let's refresh the page and let's eco drs enter one more time username password also one more time username let's click on register and we are successfully navigated to the login page which means our database connection and the code is working perfectly fine now what we can do is we can uh, directly go check from the back end as well okay so let me just uh, open a new command prompt okay so let me just open a new command prompt and uh, let us uh, navigate to that particular folder so this is the folder where we are creating the application and here uh, let me just maximize the screen a bit so here i will say cd navigate to this particular location and sqlite3 employee.db is the database which i am going to code inside so now if i say dot tables it will show me that users tables and now if i say select star from users table hit enter and it is going to say we have one person okay we just registered and e coders and one two three four okay so this is what we have just entered like this okay and here what we have done is uh, we have done a very uh, small uh, mistake over here that is while creating the table okay see while creating the table we had one admin column okay we had one admin column and we did not enter that value okay and that value here what i'll do is uh, i'll say like this uh, i'll just come back to the code and here i'll say dot schema schema okay and hit enter and as you can see we have an admin column which is boolean right now okay and we did not insert any value inside that particular column so what i'll do uh, i'll say uh, like this um, delete from uh, users semicolon enter so right now all the uh, people see if i say like this select star from users hit enter and uh, nobody is there right now okay now what i'll do here every time okay every time when the person is uh, registering okay this register route will work 
and here in the admin column okay admin column okay the question mark okay i'll add one more question mark and uh, username and password are the first two question marks and the third question mark okay every time okay every time i will keep it as um, in single quotes i'll put okay uh, in single quotes i'll say it is uh, zero okay means he is not the admin of the application he is a normal person okay so like this and then i'll use the register function once again okay from the website itself so now let me come back to the website and let me just refresh this and let's go to the register page now let us register with the same name see e c e c o d e r s e coders and one two three four okay and let's click on the register okay now it has successfully come to login page so which means we have inserted one person inside the database table okay now again let's come here and say let's select star from users hit enter and see as you can see we have got that particular value as zero which means he is a normal person which means the person who is registered is a normal user he is not the admin of this application okay but now one small problem is there since first person was deleted whose id was one and when i deleted every everybody from the user table but still the new user we are getting it from the beginning that is not from the beginning we are getting from the uh, two id okay not from the one which i don't want so what i'll do is i'll just uh, uh, drop this table permanently okay drop table uh, or wait uh, i'll just um, recreate this table one more time okay i'll just recreate this table one more time just like this only so let me just uh, copy this uh, inside a notepad file or something so that i don't have to type again and again so see this is the uh, query to create a table okay and uh, let's uh, keep it like this and let's come here and let me say drop table users okay then I, if i say dot tables it will say we don't have any kind of table right now okay now let me come back here let me copy the whole thing and paste it over here enter and now let's say dot tables and we have the users table now let's go to the website let's refresh the page let's click on the register once again let's say ecoders password one two three four let's click on register and done okay so we are inside the login page right now so let's go to the back end and say select star from users table hit enter and as you can see so the first person okay username is ecoders password is one two three four and it is the normal user so that's why in the admin column we are getting it as zero now so our register functionality works perfectly fine okay now same way we will have to work with the login page as well so let's let me come back to the visual studio code okay and uh, see guys like how we have our login page okay sorry register page okay same exactly we have a route for the login page okay so first what i'll do let's come to login.html page uh, how i have created register.html file okay just that form itself i'm going to copy put it inside the login page as well but this time the action parameter is going to be the login function so i'll just put it the route as login and method it can be post no worries and then here we will have to use the username to log into the system and uh, here we will have to keep a name for that input field that is a username and then we have a label for the password and for that also we have named it as password and here the finally the, the register button i'll just make it as the login button that's it so our login form is also ready with us okay so let's go go to our website and check out the login form as well see this is the login page and if i re refresh it and it will say the login page over here okay we'll have to give the username and password and click on the login and it has to directly go to the let's say home page or dashboard page some some something like that okay so right now home page is like this and uh, when he registers he comes to login page when he has successfully logged in let's say he comes to the home page itself okay so uh, home page right now it has nothing nothing over here okay so now let's come to the login page code okay so our html form is ready uh, which is uh, uh, the form action is login so let's come to app.py and let's come to the 
login page like this. And first of all, here we'll have to mention the methods which are allowed from the HTML page. Okay, methods is equal to see I'll allow post also and allow get also. Okay, so this is the first task we are going to do mentioning the methods which are coming from the HTML page. Okay, and just how we have requested okay how we have requested the post method here okay just like that that is going to be the first statement over here and what we need to do is we need to collect those two information from the html page okay then connect to the database write an sql query and go from there okay so what i'll do i'll just copy this see i'll copy the same statements put it in the indentation of this particular function okay and two names are coming that is one is the username and one is the password and then we need to connect to a database so that we fetch those two values from the users table so in order to fetch those two values i'll just change the sql query to select star from users table okay and i'll just remove all these things and say where where i'll use the where condition username okay which is entered by the user is question mark and password which is entered by the user is question mark okay now in this uh, list uh, i'll say this is the username and this is the password okay and this is not required because we have only like two question marks over here and first question mark is the username and the second question mark is going to be the password okay and since uh, we are just fetching the values uh, okay we are not making any changes in the database so db dot commit is not required okay it is required only when all the changes are made okay either insert update or delete okay since we are not doing those things we are just fetching those two that person that username and password person from the database we don't have to do that okay now here uh, we will be having that user cursor okay i'll just make uh, the variable name called as a user cursor itself okay so i want to fetch that particular user okay so i you what you'll have to do is you'll have to write this particular name okay and you have to use the fetch one function okay since you want only that one particular person okay and that is the main person who is running this application right now who has just logged in so i'll just name it as user okay or the current user that's it okay and this user okay this user what i'll do i'll send it to the next page okay i'll send it to the next page that is here i'll say return see as soon as he has logged in i'll redirect okay i'll redirect him using the url underscore for function to let's say the home page home page so i'll just say home dot html like this okay and uh, this user this user variable okay here uh, when you have uh, let's say not right now okay let's uh, first uh, let's come to the home page okay let's come to the home page and then uh, we'll uh, send that username to the next page that is the home page right now okay so now for time being we'll leave it at this okay so if uh, that person is present in the database okay we have to fetch that one person okay and it will directly navigate to the home page which means he has successfully logged in into the system so here let's save this file let's come to our website okay Let's come to our website let's refresh the page once okay we have already registered a username called as ecoders and his password is one two three four now let's come to the login page and if he successfully logs in we have to come to the home page automatically okay so let's put the uh, username e c o d e r s and then password one two three four let's click on the login button and as you can see we are in the home page okay which we have been redirected to okay so this is how you are going to make a register and a logout sorry login page so we have successfully registered and we have successfully logged in into our system and uh, now since uh, the register as well as the login functionality is done okay but here one problem is there see as you can see uh, if i go to the back end and say if i say select star from users okay i am able to see the user's uh, password uh, from the back end okay see we should not allow this to happen okay we should generate some kind of in a hash code for this particular password and which gets generated automatically by this application itself even if they are typing the password as one two three four okay but when i come to the back end part this uh, should not be there okay it should show us the hashed password okay some hash code for this particular password so that is what we are going to do uh, in our application right now 
okay see as soon as you uh, try to log in okay or let's say you are trying to register this particular person using uh, this particular password which you have over here okay now uh, to generate a hash code okay for this particular you password okay we need to import one more library so let me write it here that is called as wrk this one okay and it has a separate uh, module called as uh, security okay from this one we need to import two functions uh, let me import those two functions one is called as a uh, generate uh, password hash and another one is called as a uh, check password hash so these two functions will be using to generate the hash code for the password which is entered by the user okay and when the user is registering so this is where he is going to give the password that is line number 39 and here only we are going to use uh, that generate a password generate hash password so here i'll say like this okay we are going to generate okay generate a hash code for the password entered by the user okay we are going to generate a hash code which is entered by the user so this is that password which is entered by the user so let's uh, do that then okay so we are going to use uh, this particular function generate password hash let's come back here and i'm going to use this particular function uh, let's um, let's put this in a proper indentation of this function and here since this is a function we have to call this function and we'll pass our password which is entered by the user so this is the variable name okay which i have passed it over here and here i will say uh, some variable name i'll keep it as some variable name as uh, hashed uh, hashed password or something like this and when you are registering this particular user means you are inserting the values into this user table okay instead of passing uh, this password which was entered by the user we'll pass the hashed password we'll pass the hashed password like this okay and while uh, logging in okay it will uh, get back uh, from the hash password itself okay so first of all, let's check out the register functionality whether we are getting the hashed password or not so let me just, just go to the website and let's uh, refresh this and let's come to the register page so let me just click on the register and uh, see let me use a different username i'll say guru and password 1234 okay intentionally i'm keeping it as 1234 and let's click on the register button okay so it has come to login page which means we have successfully registered that particular person okay now let's go to the back end part okay and let's say select start from users once again okay so as you can see we have generated a hash code okay the in the place of password we have generated a hash code but before to that we had we were getting only like one two three four so this is how we can now make our web applications more and more secure by generating a hash password okay so this is what successfully works now okay now while logging in okay i will have to give as 1234 only okay password not the hashed uh, code or something and it will check with the hash password whether both of them are matching correctly or not and then we are going to code the next part of this particular application that is the login functionality where we are be using for this particular function where we will be using this particular function to check uh, whether the hash password and the password entered by the user has is matching or not okay and that part will be done inside this uh, login function so uh, this login function okay see this is the password which is entered by the user okay so i'll just uh, change this variable name to uh, let's say um, user entered entered password okay see th this is the user entered password okay now what we need to do see first uh, we need to connect to a database yes we have connected successfully and then we need to uh, write an sql statement okay we need to write an sql statement to get that particular person from the database table okay so let's uh, copy this one and instead of password let's put it here in the password okay see it is trying to fetch that particular person from the user cursor it is trying to fetch that particular one person from the user okay so we have named it as user over here okay so uh, we have got one person okay we have got one person okay and now like uh, here in if condition you can say if you have got that particular person okay if it has fetched successfully then i will check see i'll check like if his password matches with the hashed password which is already there in the database by using this uh, check password hash function so let me just copy this and put it here in the if condition saying that see 
the password okay which is already present in the database okay that is this user's password so user this users okay we have a password in the database and whether it matches with the password which the user has entered okay so user entered password okay as it takes two parameters like this okay it is going to compare the left side value with the right side value like this okay and if they both successfully match okay if they both successfully match then we are going to redirect them okay we are going to say which you return to uh, whatever uh, the next page is okay either the home page or the login page or something like that okay so we are going to say return and redirect okay i'm going to use the redirect function and url underscore for function to uh, take them to the home page okay take them to the home page or else or else okay or else return them or uh, redirect them okay to the same page itself okay url url underscore for okay and inside this for function okay um sorry not double quotes here here you'll have to mention the same login form itself okay so this is how we are going to make the if condition okay if uh, and this is not required anymore because it came inside the if condition over here if at all the user is present okay if at all it, it could fetch that particular person from the database okay so now let's check out that feature and uh, let's go to our login page okay so first of all let me just refresh okay and first let me just show you the database table so that uh, we know the users see we have guru and username guru and password is 1234 but this is the hashed password for 1234 for guru okay so now what i'll do i'll just say username is guru and password is 1234 now when i click on login okay see it is still in the login page itself okay it's still in the login page which means we have done some kind of a mistake okay now uh, let's see like this so i'll use a different username decoders and password is 1234 now when i click on login okay it's still here itself okay so now what i'll do i'll come back to my uh, back end okay i'll come back to back end okay i'll say drop table users hit enter so now no table is there now let's uh, copy this uh, whole creating the table uh, functionality once again okay so that we'll get a new fresh table like this and then now let's go to the website and let's first refresh and let's go to the register page now let me register uh, ACO DERS and password 1234 let's click on register and we will come back come to the login page which means we have regist successfully registered that particular person okay and let's uh, say select star from users and as you can see we have got ecoders as the username and uh, this uh, hashed password we got it okay now uh, this functionality okay let's check by logging in okay so e c o d e r s then 1234 okay when i click on login it should come to home page but it is still in the uh, login page itself so which means we have to rectify something okay we our uh, uh, password and hash password is not matching so let's come to our uh, this code okay where the user is entering his password okay and uh, here it is redirecting us it is coming to the else block okay it is coming to the else block and it is uh, redirecting us to the login page itself it is not going to the home page okay it is not going to the home page okay so first uh, let's get rid of these two these two are not required in the login form okay and let's check out what the problem is okay now uh, since uh, the request method is post we are getting the username like this okay and we are getting the password like this and uh, we are connecting to the database and uh, let's select star from users where username is question mark and password is equal to this question mark so in here we have to pass the username and the username which is entered by the password so uh, we have named it as user cursor over here and we are going to fetch one particular user okay and if that user is there okay and if that user is there okay we are going to say that user's password okay should match with the user entered password okay so this is the user entered password if both of them match then they have to get redirected to the next page 
okay but it is not happening so check password hash or else it will come to the login page uh, okay so see uh, what I have done the mistake over here okay see when whenever you are logging in okay you want to check for the username okay you want to check for the username not the password so what I'll do I'll just remove of this see this is the mistake which I have done okay this is the mistake I have done here let's put a comma semicolon like this and this is not the password okay we just need to fetch the username okay when we get that username okay his password okay users entered password and the users password which is in the database okay that we need to check okay first only we cannot check uh, the entered password and the hash password okay so this is the mistake which we have done so now let me just save this one okay let's go back to our application and let's refresh okay no need to do this uh, let's uh, come back to some other page then come to login page let's refresh this and then now uh, our username is ec eco -E -S, and then password is one two three four so which is uh, not the hashed password but it is the entered password now let's click on login and if you come back to home page which means our login functionality is also working perfectly fine okay so we have successfully registered a person okay and we have secured his uh, password also inside the database by generating a hash code like this okay for the password then when we are logging in we are using the 1234 as the password not this hashed code and it gets converted into the 1234 format itself okay so our register and the login functionality works perfectly fine in our application so let's uh, do one more thing let's register one more person say let's say uh, john is the username and password is 1234 let's click on register and we are in the login page now let's uh, login using uh, john as a username and password 1234 let's click on login and uh, we are successfully inside the home page now let's go back to our um, backend from sql 3 let's say select start from users hit enter and as you can see we have got two users right now okay two users ecoders and john and uh, let's make uh, this ecoders as the admin of that particular application so for that what i'll do i'll use the update okay update uh, users table okay and set the admin column as one okay where username is equal to uh, let's say eco -DRS. okay use the double quotes semicolon at the end and hit enter and now again let's say select start from users hit enter and this time the admin column here has become one so we have successfully upgraded this ecoder person as the admin of this application so now let's come back to our application and refresh okay so our login register and the home route is successfully done okay now what we need to do is uh, when somebody registers okay uh, when somebody registers or when somebody logs in okay that user variable okay we will pass on to each and every page of the application but uh, before to that okay uh, we did not mention uh, if at all uh, the login okay if the login feature fails uh, okay what happens uh, uh, then see suppose if I say uh, John John is the username and password uh, simply I will type some wrong password like this okay when I click on login okay we are not going to see any kind of error message saying that uh, the password did not match or something okay so first we will have to take care of that particular feature so let's come back to um, our visual studio code and uh, let's come to the login feature okay see these are the login feature okay and here uh, what i'll do is uh, i'll just create a like a global variable called as uh, some error okay see the uh, err or okay at the beginning uh, error is going to be none okay we don't have any errors uh, while logging in that is what uh, this means okay and if at all okay if at all there is an error if the password does not match okay see we are going to the same login page itself okay but what we will do is we'll set that error parameter okay as like this okay uh, password did not match okay password did not match please try again or something like that okay see this this was uh, the error okay see this is the error message okay which we need to 
uh, send it to the login page okay if the password does not match okay and that i'll uh, uh, mention over here see uh, some some kind of a login login error okay is this error statement okay which we have created over here like this okay and this uh, login error is the one which we need to print uh, somewhere in the login page okay which you need to print somewhere in the login page so this variable name you have to copy which you have written on the left side okay which you have to which you have written on the left side and then you have to uh, decide somewhere in the login.html page okay where you need to show that particular error okay where you need to show that particular error and see here we have the h4 okay and a horizontal line like this and here as soon as you are trying to log in okay if uh, that error statement comes just below this uh, horizontal line it would look much better and uh, it would say that you have done some kind of a mistake like this that is password not matching or something like this so what we'll do is we'll just put it here just below this horizontal line so let's come to our uh, login.html page and this is where okay so this is where that uh, uh, variable is coming so i'll put it in a if condition see if uh, there is a login error okay if at all there is a login error then only we need to show this or else it is not required so end the if statement over here see like this okay and here let's say uh, we create a separate uh, division for that okay we create a separate division where i'm going to show this uh, login error okay login uh, error e r r o r okay this is what is going to be done and uh, for this uh, a class name i'll give it as uh, uh, bg uh, that is background okay hyphen green okay bg hyphen green that is uh, the border okay and uh, in so, no, the that is the back background okay and uh, i'll say uh, like this border okay border and the border also i'll keep it very light okay light this type of a green color like this okay so this is going to be the error statement which will get uh, displayed on the screen see login error okay this will be the login error which gets passed to the login page dot html okay so now let me save it uh, okay now let's check out that functionality by going to our page okay let's uh, refresh okay let's click on the login page and uh, so geo h and john is a username and one two three four is his password and let's click on login and as you can see we are in the home page right now but if i come to login page once again and uh, let's say john and uh, some wrong password if i type and if i click on login okay uh, we, we are in the login page but uh, we did not get that error message printed okay so let's uh, go and check out why we did not get it maybe i have done some kind of a mistake while giving the uh, name and uh, here uh, this error okay the login error which we have passed okay login error which we have passed okay let's uh, run the application one more time and let's check because everything looks fine uh, first let's come to home page then login page okay j o h n john some password wrong password and let's click on login and as you can see functionality is working perfectly fine but we are not getting that error message here okay it has not printed that message okay so let's come back to our code and uh, here let's uh, see that functionality okay so here we have the login page okay and here we have the error message which is none at the beginning and that is getting passed over here okay if at all so the password does not match okay so error message will get set like this and uh, login error is going to get passed like this okay and then uh, let's see uh, in login.html page okay see this is where okay this is where the division okay is uh, showing to us if login error is there okay if this login error is there so let me grab that name one more time let's go to login.html page uh, let me paste it over here okay it's um, it is actually correct and uh, i don't know why we are not getting that okay let's let's uh, refresh the page and let's check out or uh, let's close the application and rerun it once again 
okay and now let us check out one more time okay let's refresh the page okay j o h n john and one two three four is the password but i want to give a wrong password let's click on login and uh, still we are not able to see that username so let's come back to sorry uh, the error message so let's come back here uh, let's see let's come to app.py and check out uh, what exactly is the error okay i get it see what is happening here right now is see it has generated an error message but uh, it is not going to this page directly see it is directly taking you to a login page where we are not sending any kind of error okay error message we are not sending this variable okay so what we need to do is we don't have to write this uh, line anymore so when uh, it comes to an else block okay what happens is directly after that line what is the next line it is going to get is this particular line okay it is going to set uh, this as the particular line okay so now let me save it once again okay let me refresh uh, uh, this application it has restarted now let's go to our website uh, let's refresh this page and let's log in as john j o h n john and some wrong password i want to type and let's click on login okay so as you can see we have got the password did not match uh, division okay so but we did not get uh, the bootstrap class name which we had entered okay so let's go to the login.html and uh, see we background okay background is not green okay we name it as success okay let's use ccess or let's put it as danger okay danger is red color okay and uh, i don't think uh, we require border but it's okay we can we can actually put it okay and uh, this one uh, i'll make it as text hyphen center so that it comes exactly in the center of that particular uh, division okay now let's go back to our website and let's uh, refresh this and let's continue okay see as it is saying the password did not match and here uh, the text uh, uh, if it is in white color it might look uh, much better so i'll come here and say text hyphen light let's save it let's go back to our website and let's refresh the page and as you can see okay the text is in white color right now okay and we have successfully created the login functionality properly okay so this is how you are going to code for login and now if i put the right username okay and the right password that is one two three four and i click on login okay it directly comes to the home page of that particular application okay now let's go to the login page register page and the logout functionality these three are working perfectly fine okay so uh, the next feature i want to put in this one is uh, whenever uh, any person is trying to register see right now uh, let me so go back to the back end and uh, let's say select start from users okay see guys there are already two users called as one is ecoders and one is john okay and if they try to re-register with the same name okay uh, one error message should come saying that uh, the username is already taken you have to try a different one okay so that is the next functionality which i want to put in my application so first what thing what you are going to do is see in this uh, app.py file i'll come to the register route and i'm going to say see if the request method is post and you are getting the username and password from the user from the html form okay and then you are generating the hash uh, hash code for the password okay now after generating this okay after generating this i'll uh, make sure whether this uh, username is already present in the database table or not okay before inserting these two values see you connected to the database and here let me just put it here in comments like uh, this okay checking for duplicate duplicate username in the database in the database okay for that what you'll do first we'll write one more execute statement db dot execute okay that uh, uh, select star from users table where the username okay username entered by the user is whatever the question mark like this and inside a list uh, okay i'm going to mention uh, whether we already have a person with this particular username or not like this okay see if it is already there 
okay if it is already there okay so let me just uh, make this as uh, uh, like user cursor something user cursor is equal to db.execute and from that uh, user cursor okay i'm going to fetch one person which matches with that particular username okay and i'll say like this uh, i'll name it as uh, existing user existing user he is already there in the uh, database okay now what we need to do is if he is already existing okay so if he is already existing in the database then we'll put an if condition saying that if uh, existing user already there with uh, matching username then what we need to do is we need to uh, tell an error message saying that uh, that username is already taken okay so here uh, let me create a global variable called as a uh, register error okay register error at the beginning uh, let it be none okay so uh, this variable okay this variable okay we don't have any kind of errors right now so that's why we have kept it as none okay but uh, if the user is already existing okay then what we do is we'll put that register error is equal to like this we'll say username already taken uh please select a different one different username okay so this is going to be the error message okay once uh, this error message is generated okay what we need to do is we need to redirect them to the uh, registration page itself so here uh, first of all what i'm going to do is i'm going to pass uh, this variable okay i'm going to pass this variable as the register error equal to the register error and it goes to the register.html page okay so that is going to be like if uh, this condition runs okay if this condition runs okay and later on or what you can do is uh, you can also uh, send that uh, error message uh, in this manner as well okay see instead of passing it here okay what we can do is we can uh, come here and say uh, like this uh, that you return okay and uh, render a template called as a uh, register dot html and when it is done you pass this register error into that particular page register error like this okay if uh, if at all there is an error like this or else uh, okay see after finishing up this uh, okay if there is no error okay automatically it will come to this particular block and it will insert those two values inside the database and commit the database and directly take you to the login page okay so this is how this application is going to work for the register functionality okay now all we need to do is we have to print uh, this uh, error on the register.html page okay uh, and uh, let us do here after that horizontal line okay like how we have done in login page that if there was a login error when we we need to show this division uh, and all those things and just uh, i'll copy this whole uh, division itself and paste it here like this and instead of login error i'll just make this as register error okay register error and uh, let me uh, just copy that name directly from here so that we don't make any kind of mistakes so register error comes to register.html page and this is the variable if at all there is a register error then only we'll print that register error here in jinja syntax like this okay so this is our entire division so let me just bring it here like this this division this whole division gets shown to us only if there is a register error okay if not there won't be any kind of uh, message error message on the screen okay so let's uh, check out that functionality now okay let's come here let's uh, let's say refresh okay and uh, let's say uh, john john okay we know that john already username is present okay then let's uh, try to give some other password like uh, a b c d something and then if i try to register okay it should say username already taken please try a different username okay this functionality also is working perfectly fine okay now let's come back uh, let's refresh the page and let's say uh, smith is a new username password 1234 let's register and we come to the login page which means he has been successfully uh, registered in that application so now let's come to the back end and let's check out the new user who is present in the database that is Smith, his ID is 3 and he is a regular user. So here it is 0 at the last. Admin column is 0. Okay. So wherever it is 1, he is the admin of that particular application. So this is how 
you are going to do your login logout functionality okay now if i uh, come to the, the login page and say username smith and password on to the and click on login button okay we are successfully coming to the home page but here we are not able to see who has logged in okay so what we are going to do is we are going to print out their names here in the home page as soon as they log in okay so this is the next functionality which we want to add inside our code okay see inside our app.py and that name will travel to all the pages okay until they are running this particular application okay for to do this but uh, for this functionality to work uh, what you need to do is uh, whenever he is logging in or he is registering or something okay we need to store his username okay let's suppose he has logged in okay let's suppose he has logged in and we need to store that information somewhere okay so for that you need to create uh, a session object okay and that session object gets traveled to all the pages okay but uh, in order to create a session object okay first uh, we will have to import a library called as os okay and here using this os library okay it is going to uh, we are going to say uh, let's uh, generate a random uh, number let's say some 24 characters or something and uh, let us keep uh, that as the secret key of that particular application okay for that particular user so we are going to say like this app you config okay you configure a secret key s e c r e t secret underscore key for the current user who is using this application by generating a u random number okay random number okay let's say of size 24 or something like that okay see this is how uh, random d o m okay random number of 24 see this is this will be the first uh, thing which you have to do in order to log in and store that user information into some kind of a secret key for that particular user while that session is on okay as soon as uh, the session gets uh, on okay the username gets transferred in the session variable now in order to work uh, okay see here we have created a login function where he is giving his username and uh, he is entering his password and uh, we are checking whether uh, uh, that username is already there in the database or not okay so once uh, we have fetched that user okay we'll check for his password see if the user is there okay so his password will match with the entered password that hashed password okay so this uh, functionality is done okay but now if he's trying to register let's say he's trying to register okay and uh, we are checking the whether that uh, person okay whether that person okay whatever the username and password he has given okay uh, we have generated the hash password for him and we have connected to the database and then we are selecting that particular username from the uh, database and checking whether the, he is an existing user or not okay from the database okay so in, in this order we will come to know whether he has already registered or not okay now let's come to the login page okay let's come to the login route so this is the login route okay this is the this is the login route okay and now when he is giving his username and password okay what we are going to do is we are going to get connected to the database and write an SQL query to check whether he is uh, that uh, username okay present in the database or not okay once he is present uh, okay we are going to check for his password okay if the password is matching correctly then we go to the home page right but before going to the home page okay before going to the home page itself uh, I'll just create uh, a session variable okay I'll use the session uh, module and uh, here by using single quotes or double quotes I'll say uh, a variable called as user okay in this one what i'll do this uh, user who i have fetched from the database i'll put his uh, username okay i'll put the username from the database to his location and then this session object okay this session object we will have to import it directly from the flask library like this okay so session is also imported and we have uh, the user's username okay stored in a variable called as user itself okay see this is how we capture the username and store it in a variable called as user in a session object and then we will go to the home page with that particular user variable now the next step what i'll do is see here we have the login functionality and as soon as the person is logging in his username will be in session variable called as user so for this uh, what i'll do is i'll i'll go here at the top and uh, create a new function see i will say uh, get current user okay get the current user who is using this application so first of all i'll say uh, the user in this application is no one so i'll just say user is none 
okay at the beginning the user is none and if now i'll put an if condition saying that if there is a variable called as user okay in the session object okay in the session object okay if it's there in the session object okay the session's user okay session's user you put it as my user the variable name which we have kept over here like this and i'll check whether he is uh, from our database or not so i'll say get connected to the database and then i'll say db you just execute a statement to check whether he is from our database or not so i'll say select star from users table where username is equal to this particular question mark and then here in the square brackets in the list i will say this is that particular user see this variable okay whose username we captured in the session and we have stored it here in the name and whether this particular person belongs to our database or not okay and here i will say that uh, user cursor okay user cursor is there okay for this particular uh, sql query and from this user cursor okay i just want to fetch that one particular person okay by who matches with this username okay and that is going to be our user okay that is going to be the user okay then this whole function is going to return okay that particular user for us okay so user is the variable okay which gets passed on to all the html pages right now okay and see this function takes us to home page okay and just uh, before going to the home page if i just create a variable here and just uh, call the get current user function okay i'll get the current user see this is returning the user and that only goes to the home page okay as user so user is equal to user so this is what we are going to do now means we are going to call uh, this particular function at the beginning of each and every function okay each and every function and uh, this name okay this name is going to get passed uh, to all the pages here at the last so user is equal to user just like this i'll do the same thing for the register function as well as soon as the function starts i'll call the get current user function and at the end of register or html i'm going to pass user equal to user he is the current user of this particular application okay see this is how we are going to pass that username as soon as they log in okay as soon as they log in okay we are going to store their username into a session object called as user okay and here we have created a function saying that at the beginning that user is none okay and if there is a user in the session we want you to put that user in a variable called as user and we will see whether he is from our database or not okay and if we get, fetch that one particular person one th that particular person we will return that from this particular function whoever he calls it to so that is what we have done so in home first statement is going to be the user get current user and we are going to pass that particular function over here okay and the login functionality is done okay similarly uh, in the login also we are going to get the current user and we are going to pass it over here same way for the register okay the first statement is going to be get the current user and pass that user inside the html template register.html template okay now we have our user we have our user variable which is getting passed to all the html pages now all we need to do is we have to print that particular name okay we just have to print that particular name in login page also register page also in home page also okay and to do that in the layout.html okay see guys in layout.html okay we had uh, this uh, child 2 okay which was like totally empty okay what we can do is here we can mention okay here we can mention that uh, uh, we have a, a h1 okay we have an h1 tag over here okay this is uh, some particular page okay this is some particular page we are going to and uh, or we don't we don't even have to do this okay we'll just uh, print out okay we'll just print out the username so user hyphen is something like this okay and if at all there is a user then only we'll display this uh, engine this paragraph in jinja syntax okay like this so i'll just uh, create a block over here using this syntax uh, saying that uh, uh, i'll create an if if condition if block so i'll say if uh, there is a user okay then only we need to show this paragraph and this block ends here so end the if condition over here so let me bring this indentation properly like this like this 
okay and that we have done it in layout.html so that it gets moved on to the all the html pages so let me just uh, copy this okay let me just copy this no uh, here we need to print that users okay user okay and let me just save it for time being okay i'll show you exactly what happens if i just print this user and if we want the username of that particular user okay then how we will have to print it in the next step okay so let's uh, save this file and let's go to our website and refresh okay so let me just refresh the page okay now let us try to log in okay so we have uh, smith over here and password let me say one two three four okay let's click on login okay and as you can see we have got our users see it is a user object which we have created okay see we have just create shown the object that user object has traveled to that particular page okay and see guys if you want uh, uh, i'll first i'll say dot header h e a d e r header hit enter and uh, i will say like this dot header h e a d e r dot header on okay now again say select star from users okay and you are going to see the column names as well see about this particular user who is getting shown to you okay do you want his username to get shown means what we have to do is here as like uh, let's come to our visual studio code and see here we are printing the user right here in a square bracket okay using single quotes or double quotes you can use okay or i'll, I'll just use the double quotes itself and you have to pass the column name okay that users column name is username which is what i want to display on the screen so let me just save this one and let's go back to our website and check out this time when i refresh this page okay it will say the user who has entered this application who has logged in is this particular user who is called as smith okay now let me go back to the login page again okay let's uh, try with john j o j o h n john and password 1 2 3 4 and when i click on login okay see the user now who has logged in is john okay but now what happens if i click on logout okay it comes to home page okay it comes to home page and uh, now first of all uh, let us uh, re login j o h n john and password 1 2 3 4 let's click on login okay so here we have the name called as john okay and we are in the home page but if i go to the register page that name still appears over here okay when i come to login page that name is already here okay when i come to home page that that is also there okay this is the main link to come to the home page itself but uh, when i click on the logout button okay now we are we are in home page itself but if i go back okay if i go back i can still see that username john from the last session okay when we logged out okay when we logged out it just came to home page but it not remove that particular user from the session see if i go back to this is home page i can still see the name if i go back again in the login page also i can still see the name even after logging you out okay so in order to rectify this uh, what we need to do is we need to remove this user from the session object okay and that we have to do inside app.py in logout function see in the logout function we have to do that okay how to do that means see here when the function starts logout function starts okay you have to say from the session okay from the session you pop out okay we are going to use the pop function and say there is a variable called as user okay there is a variable called as user and you have to set it back to none okay you have to set it back to none and then you have to come to the home page okay then you have to navigate to the home page okay and here uh, instead of uh, doing it like this okay i'm going to use the redirect function okay which uses the url underscore function url underscore for function and here we'll have to mention the home pages functions name that is home which i have kept so now let me just save the application okay and now let's go back and check out our application okay so first uh, let me just log out okay let me just refresh everything first let me log in so i'll log in as smith password 1234 let me click on login okay see now you can see that name getting printed on all the pages if i go to home page also it's there login page also it's there register page is also there uh, this home page is also it is there but what happens if i click on logout now that session object okay session object user has is gone okay now if i go on register you cannot see that name you login also you cannot see that name home also you cannot see that name okay see in this way you are going to create a 
ओके द लॉग इन लॉग आउट रजिस्टर एंड होम पेज फीचर्स फॉर योर पर्टिकुलर एप्लीकेशन ओके लाइक दिस ओके सो लेट मी कम बैक टू माई वेबसाइट ओके सो दीज आर द मेन फीचर्स ओके मेन फीचर्स ऑफ योर एप्लीकेशन विच यू शुड नो हाउ टू बिल्ड फ्रॉम स्क्रैच लॉग इन लॉग आउट रजिस्टर एंड ऑल दोज फीचर्स now after creating the successfully login logout routes and everything okay now what happens here is see when i am using this application see i was in register page and i registered and it opened the database means it connected to the database and then directly it came to the login page okay it will directly come to the login page but when i was in register page and I, when i was clicking on this register button okay it did not close the database okay it did not close the base database it directly came to the login page and when i entered the username and password and clicked on login okay see let me just show you if i say smith and if i say uh, password name password is uh, 1234 and when i click on login see from login page to it will come to the home page okay by connecting to the database and fetching this particular user from the database for me but uh, it did not close the database there okay so this functionality has to be put here okay whenever we go from one route to another route another route to another route the database should close itself automatically so this is the next feature which we are going to put inside our application in app.py file okay so in order to do that what we need to do is we need to create a a function okay which tests down or closes the database after each route is changed so what i'll say is like this see we'll create an route okay for the entire tear down okay tear down application context okay there is a inbuilt keyword called as tear down application context what this will do is it will close off the database see for that what i'll do i'll create a function called as a you can name anything but i'll name it as close database okay and uh, it takes like uh, a variable called as error you can say like this okay and then i'll say like if uh, i'll use the hash attribute has attribute uh, and uh, say the global variable g like if it has uh, an attribute called as employee underscore db okay if it has a database called as employee database okay then uh, tell the g variable that employee database is there right that we need to close and employee underscore db we need to close that using the close function of the database so this global variable that also we will have to import it from the flask library that is i'll write it over here at the top okay so this is the code which automatically runs after every route changes okay so this is how you are going to write the tear down function so now the entire functionality of the login logout register and home page is complete now the next functionality i want to put in this application is uh, to show all the users uh, in this particular database so uh, i'll show them in a html page see right now we have three users okay out of which one person is uh, the admin of this particular application and two people are uh, the normal users of this application and this whole thing i just need to show in it show in a uh, html page or you can say html layout template okay see for that first of all what what i'll do is i'll go to the layout.html and uh, inside the navigation okay inside this navigation how you have register login and all those uh, links uh, i'm just going to create a one more uh, uh, list item over here okay and uh, we'll make just make a function called as uh, promote okay promote okay we are going to promote uh, a normal user to the admin of this application promote okay promote spelling is uh, wrong let me just correct it off okay and now we need to create a route and a function with this particular name so let me come back to app.py and uh, here uh, let us create that particular function so at the rate app dot r o u t e route in forward slash we have to put it as promote and then we need to create a function called as promote itself and here okay uh, we are going to return and render a template called as promote.html promote.html okay and this also here first the user is going to be none and we can get the current user by calling the get current user function and that user we are going to pass over here as well so this is the functionality of the, our application okay so we have uh, our promote page ready or sorry promote function ready and now let me just copy this name and in the templates folder itself you need to create a, that promote.html file and from the login page how we have extended the entire layout.html okay i am going to put it here like this 
and now just like this uh, main center main content okay uh, let me just uh, grab this main center block and put it over here and let's end that block as well here like this okay and let me put it like this e and e end block center main so we have our promote page okay so here let me just put it in h4 just like uh, previous code this is the promotion page okay and then afterwards we have a horizontal line okay and just below that horizontal line we will display all the users from this uh, okay and first what we need to do uh, let's come to this promote function okay now see whenever we want to see something from the database okay see first of all let me call the get database function okay get database function which we have created in database.py file okay so let me just create a variable like this and say uh, get database okay get the database okay and now whenever we are fetching something okay whenever we are fetching something okay this promote page okay let's say uh, this promote page okay connects to the database and uh, fetches everybody from the database and shows you shows you on the screen okay for that what we will need to do is okay we need to uh, say either whether it is a method request method how we are requesting get or post so here uh, for timing what i'll say methods allowed for this particular function is both post as well as get so let me put it here as post and here in capital letters let me put it as get also and see whenever uh, we are fetching something okay from the database is usually the get method so here i will say like this if request dot method okay request method is equal to equal to get okay then you just connect to the database and fetch me those values from the database okay so since we are already connected here uh, at line number 88 we don't have to connect once again i'll just say execute okay execute and i want all the users from the users table so i'll say select star from users table that's it okay so on the left side okay i'll say all users uh, cursor okay all users cursor okay that is a variable name i want to keep and from this cursor all users cursor i'm going to fetch all the people okay so here i'll say uh, a variable called as all employees okay all the employees we have fetched okay so this is how we are going to connect to the database and we are going to fetch all the uh, people okay from the from that particular database okay now what i'll do is after fetching all the database okay see this function is showing you the promote page but uh, as soon as we have fetched uh, all the people from the database i'll use the redirect function once again okay and inside that i'll use the url for function and i will say that this time okay you will have to go to uh, let's say um, uh, you can go to this page itself uh, by taking all the employees with you okay so you can uh, simply give the function name that is uh, promote and uh, here you can simply put a comma and say uh, you take all the employees all employees is there equal to all employees employees like this okay you can re show me this page only by filling out all the employee details in the inside that particular page so this is the variable name which is holding all the employees okay right now we have three employees together and all the three employees are in this particular variable okay now this particular variable okay i'll copy and let's go to the promote.html page and here okay what we need to do is after this horizontal line okay i'll print all these people okay one by one okay one by one uh, let's say maybe using a bootstrap template or something uh, let's go to here and let's type tables okay so like this so we have lots of tables like this okay and uh, let's take this one only okay let's take this one itself okay so let me just copy this whole table uh, come to our visual studio code and let's paste that code over here okay see we have these uh, headings over here like this we have these headings and uh, here uh, instead of hash symbol uh, let's uh, say id of that particular person okay so here id will come 
So here uh, the username or uh, let me put it in capital okay like this username so uh, technically we don't have to show the password but we'll show the password for time being this was for, just for understanding purpose but in real we'll do not show any kind of passwords uh, on any kind of screens okay and the here finally uh, whether he is admin or not okay whether he is the admin or not so we have like this four columns we have okay and now here uh, we have uh, these two rows are there that is not required okay so this is the entire row which is showing you uh, the, which will show you the page contents like this okay see first uh, let me just uh, save this one okay let me just save this one and uh, let's just uh, show you that html page timing okay see if i refresh this okay if i refresh this okay uh, we have this promote page okay when i click on the promote page uh, see it says uh, uh, the page isn't working uh, because uh, here uh, we need to do one more thing okay see we have some kind of an error we'll just uh, rerun the application okay and let's go to our page and check out the page once okay so let me just click on the promote page let me just refresh so it will not work until i write the entire code so let's do that itself then okay so now let's come to the promote page itself okay let's come to the promote page and see here at the place of one okay we need to show the id of that particular user okay and see from app.py we are sending it as all employees okay all employees see what i'll do is see if uh, uh, I'll come to the promote page and see this row table row which is uh, getting shown to us here I will write an if condition first okay I'll use this block and say like if all employees are there then only we, we show this uh, whole table row okay like this so I'll end the if condition over here end the if condition like this okay now let us assume there are okay there are uh, currently there are like three users right now okay and this uh, statement becomes this if condition becomes true so if this if condition is true then what we will do is we'll loop through each and every employee see i'll say like this i'll uh, use the same code once again like this syntax okay and i'll loop over each and every employee so i'll say for employee in all employees okay and here in place of one okay i'm going to say employee use the square bracket and here you mention the id of that particular employee okay id of the particular employee and sim just like this only okay let me copy this and instead of mark here employee in double quotes you say say username of that particular employee okay then again like this copy paste it over here where it says auto and here we are going to show the password of that particular employee then here whether he is the admin or not so employee square bracket okay like this and mention that admin column over there okay so this is how we are going to display okay each and every detail about all the users in our html page like this okay then finally we save this file let's come to app.py let's save all these files okay then uh, we have uh, this uh, promote page let me just show you the code once one more time okay and let's go to our website okay and let's refresh the page okay now let's uh, uh, click on promote page okay it says uh, the page is not working for some reason let's go and check why is the reason what is the reason for this one okay and here see uh, it says uh, some kind of a 303 error 302 error okay see it says row object employee and all those things get promote okay home and all those things it says here uh, 304 error 302 and here promote promote which employee all employees of this particular object like this and uh, okay so uh, so let's uh, check the code on promote.html page okay see uh, here i have done a small mistake that this has to be inside uh, the jinja jinja syntax okay so let's come here and uh, put the jinja syntax over here like this okay so let me copy this and paste it here like this like this and like this okay and here also let's close that jinja syntax as curly braces okay and now let's save it okay so uh, hopefully this uh, rectifies the error okay so let me just uh, stop the application and uh, rerun it again 
okay so we got the url perfectly so let's come back to our application let's refresh the code okay now log out promote page is not working still it is not working it says uh let's refresh the page login let's log in first and check out whether it is logging in correctly okay yes we are logged in let's come to promote page okay it says promote is not working see when i click on this link okay so first we need to check whether uh, the route is properly written or not so let's go to our layout.html okay and promote yes url for promote function okay so we have not done any mistake in the url part okay now let's come to app.py where the actual promote function is working okay and uh, since uh, we are not using any kind of form or button uh, to come to the promote function uh, uh, let's uh, make some changes over here okay see uh, I, I see the error now see as i told you before that uh, see uh, when we are promoting the page okay promoting any one particular user see method here i have mentioned like post or get both of them see i'll just remove this okay for time being i'll just remove this because that is not required because whenever we are fetching something from the database okay by default uh, the method is uh, get so we don't have to check whether the method is get or not okay so i'll just remove that code from there okay and uh, see instead of uh, doing this uh, means uh, instead of redirecting again and loading that promote page itself we don't have to do that okay we just have to fetch directly we just connect to the database and uh, we just uh, fetch all the users and uh, this all the employees will uh, just directly pass it inside the uh, function itself okay so like this that's it okay so promote page is just going to show you all the users okay from that particular uh, function that's it okay in promote.html page okay see now uh, we are not getting uh, any kind of these kind of uh, warning statements or anything okay see it has reloaded the app.py and it has started the application as well okay now let me just uh, finally save this file once again okay let's go back to our page okay and uh, first of all let, let me just log out okay and just refresh the page now let me just log in first okay i'll say john then password 1234 login okay and uh, we are successfully logged in now let's click on the promote page and uh, it says uh, we have not entered the if condition so where it says exactly here promote okay so it says in line number 91 in app.py file so let's go to app.py file and line number 91 okay see this is the html page which is showing to us and let's go to promote.html page see here i have opened a for loop like this but uh, i have never closed it anywhere see after this table row okay i'll use the same uh, code once again and say end the for loop over here okay see like this okay and now let's save it let's go back to our code let's refresh the page and as you can see we have got the id the username and password and whether he is the admin of this application or not okay see we have successfully created a, okay a page which says uh, okay which shows us all the users uh, in our application okay see right now what i'll do is i'll go back uh, and register one more person okay register one more person uh, let's say jane okay and password uh, like one two three four and let's click on uh, register okay so jane is also added and now if i click on the promote see as you can see we have got that one particular person also okay so jane is that one particular person who is getting shown to us on the screen like this okay now the next functionality will be how to promote uh, these uh, zeros to ones okay we have to come up with a function okay which uh, changes uh, or updates uh, this value of admin from zero to one okay just by clicking on this particular name anywhere okay we click on this uh, id or uh, name or even uh, if this password or anything like that okay and when we click on this okay it will it should automatically become one which means that person has uh, gotten promoted as the admin of this particular application okay and the next time when we click on the same button again okay uh, maybe they turn back to zero itself okay so that functionality we have to put next so first thing uh, what i'll do is uh, see our next part is to either up, uh, we need to update uh, this particular person okay to admin or 
uh, let's say if the admin decides to delete this particular person, we'll delete it or uh, we'll delete him from uh, the database itself. So what what we'll do is uh, we'll just uh, go to this uh, page uh, which says uh, promote HTML promote uh, dot HTML page. Okay, see these are the uh, rows. These are the columns uh, which ID, username, password, and admin. Okay, just like this, sir. Uh, two table headings also I will give. Two more table headings I'll add it here. Okay, one will say that uh, we have uh, this update option. Okay, one will have the update option. So we'll update, and another one will have uh, the delete option. D L E T delete option. Okay, and uh, see now uh, in this place, see the table data place. Okay, I'm, I will add uh, those two details like this. Okay, and instead of this, okay, instead of this, what I'll do, I'll do instead of these two data, okay, I will create uh, two links, href equal to like this, and here I'm going to say update, okay, update, so or let's say promote, okay, promote option will be there. Promote like this, okay. Uh, let me keep it in capital. So P R O M O T. Either promote him or delete him from the database. So like that. So uh, I'll copy this uh, one more time. Or aha, uh -huh, this whole thing I can copy one more time and uh, paste it here. Okay. And instead of promote, I'll say delete. Okay. I'll say delete like this. Okay. Now here uh, for time being, uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll just uh, put some Jinja syntax like this okay like this and here what we need to mention is uh, the next page which where it has to go and it has to promote that particular person okay and here we'll uh, later on mention uh, the page where it goes and it deletes uh, that particular person okay so right now let's come to the promote page okay see what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the URL underscore for function okay for function and here first I'll use the single quotes because here outside there is double quotes I cannot use uh, double quotes once again so here in the single quotes I will say promote to admin see promote to admin will be the function okay where uh, that will be the next route uh, where it goes okay but how it will go see it will take uh, the employees ID along with it so that I can uh, use that ID to update uh, that admin from 0 to 1 so what I'll do is uh, I'll just uh, keep it as uh, EMP ID. Okay, I'll keep a variable name called as EMP ID. And uh, here, the one which we have mentioned here, like this EMP ID, that I'm going to paste it over here like this. And since uh, uh, we have double quotes outside, we'll have to make it single quotes on the inside. See, this is how when I click on the promote button, okay, it will go to this uh, particular route along with the ID of that particular row. Okay, see, let me just save this one and first show you the application like this. See, let me just refresh this page. Okay, uh, it says, uh, did you mean promote instead? Okay, since uh, we don't have a uh, promote admin yet, promote to admin, uh, we have not created yet. Okay, so that's why we are going to get that uh, particular error. So first of all, let me just go to app.py and create this route. Okay, let's create this route. App.py is there. Okay, and here, uh, let me say app dot route uh, put a forward slash and paste that name and then I'm going to create a function with the same name okay put a colon symbol and I'll say return render a template uh, for time being uh, let's say um, the promote page itself promote dot html itself where we are passing our user equal to user and we'll get that user by calling the get current user function like this and here see put a forward slash and here i'm going to mention when integer id is going to come okay integer emp id is going to come let's let's keep it like in that manner okay and that employee id will be like a variable emp id to this particular function over here okay and this employee id will be using to update that particular person okay so let's uh, save this file okay let's save this file and uh, let's go back to our web application and let's refresh the page once okay 
so we are here at the login page and let's click on the promote page so as you can see we have got uh, that promote as well as the delete function and when i click on this uh, promote okay see it's already one this id is going to get traveled to promote to admin page okay that functional function which we have just created in app.py see this is the function where it will take us okay and here simply uh, we are simply saying promote.html page itself it has to show once again okay so this is how our functionality is going to work okay when i click on promote okay see promotion promotion page has come but uh, it has not uh, shown anything because we have not sent all the details yet okay so simply and then again when i click on delete it will delete this particular person based on the same id uh, of that particular person okay now what we need to do is see we need to come to this uh, particular promote admin function okay and then see using this id okay using this id we need to update the parameter okay update the uh, admin parameter so i'm going to say db dot get the database okay see this will be the database where uh, we'll be connecting to and updating the column admin okay so once uh, when we have connected to the database okay see i'll just say db dot execute e x e c u t okay db dot execute okay see once what we have to do right now we have to just update uh, the admin value okay we, so we are going to say update first of all update the users table okay and set uh, the new value for the admin column a d m i n admin column as one okay where okay id which is passed by the user okay from the get method will be the employee id so here first we'll have to put question mark like this and uh, this question mark here we'll have to mention here as a list or a tuple you can mention it this as this employee id which is getting passed okay then in order to make the changes permanent we'll have to use the db dot commit function that's it and once it is done we just have to redirect the user to the promote page itself where all the employees are getting shown to us okay so instead of using uh, this uh, okay i'm going to say redirect okay redirect url underscore for that promote function itself okay see this is how we will update that particular user from the table okay as soon as we click on that promote button okay but right now it is not looking like a button it is looking like a link so we'll just make it look like a button so first let me just click on that promote okay and as you can see it has become one okay so now first uh, this functionality is automatically working perfectly fine and now let's go to our uh, code that is uh, promote.html and uh, this uh, link okay let's add a bootstrap class name so that it looks like a button so class equal to see first of all button then btn okay hyphen outline hyphen s u c c e s s success okay so now it looks like a button but uh, let me make it as a small button so b t n hyphen s m okay button small okay so this is what our uh, button is going to look like okay now let's just go to the website and let's refresh it and as you can see we have got the promote button okay instead of a link okay b t n small button okay and uh, s m yes button small okay and just like this only okay what we are going to do is we are going to create the delete functionality as well okay so uh, the same whole thing okay the whole link i am going to copy like this okay and paste it over here okay and button outline i'm going to make danger okay in a red color button okay and here uh, instead of uh, promote to admin i'm going to make delete delete user okay delete user okay and there also i'm going to send the employee id which is passed uh, in that particular row okay and now let us come uh, and uh, copy this name from here and first of all let us uh, change this uh, promote to delete okay let us change this to deleter and if possible we can uh, keep it in small letters only it will look uh, much better promote and this one to delete d l e t e delete okay now let's save it let's copy this uh, function name let's come to app.py and here okay and i don't think we need to pass this user also that i'll change it okay then here let me create a route r o u t e route to delete user okay from that page which will get 
an integer value that is employee id whom we have to delete from the table and let's create a function with the same name delete user and employee id will be the parameter which gets passed to that okay and now what we have to do we have to just uh, get connected to the database and we have to say db dot execute a delete sql statement that is delete from users okay where id is equal to the question mark okay and this question mark is going to be the employee id which gets passed from the get method by default it will be the get method every single time okay whenever we are not using a form okay once when you delete something from the database we need to commit all the changes so we'll say db dot commit and we'll make them redirect okay return and redirect them to uh, let's say let's use the url for function url underscore for function and say uh, go back to the promote page itself okay go back to the promote page itself where everybody is getting shown to us all the users are getting shown to us so this is what our delete user functions will do okay now let's come to our web page let's uh, refresh the page okay so i think we have uh, saved it uh, before uh, making the changes right so that's why it is coming up like this so first uh, let us uh, rerun the application and it still says uh, here that uh, value error okay malformed url rule that is delete users like this okay and here what i'll do i'll just uh, remove this uh, extra white space from here so let's save this one again and let's rerun this particular app okay so we have got the url back again and let's go to our website and check out and let's refresh the page see now we have got the delete button as well now we have got the promote button as well so now if i click on the delete option this id is going to get travel to delete user uh, function in app.py and it is going to delete this particular user and it is going to reload this promote page itself okay by deleting this particular person so first let us delete this uh, third person okay and show you if i click on delete see that third person is gone okay and it, just like that if i click on promote okay this function this person gets promoted to the uh, admin of this particular application okay now let me change everybody okay let me go back uh, to the back end of this particular application and uh, see right now from the backend also if i say select star from users okay see here at the last column admin column it is all one 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 okay so let's update that and change everybody to zero right now means none of them are admins of the application so i'll say like this update users okay and set admin is equal to zero for everyone so if i hit enter all of them will become uh, normal users not admin anymore see if i say select start from users okay everyone has become zero okay normal users okay but i'll update only one person okay to the admin okay admin uh, update user set admin equal to one where uh, id is equal to one okay just the equal to one i'll just update it as the admin of the application so select like this select start from users it will say only the e-coder person is the admin of this application like this okay rest of them are the normal users so now let us uh, come back to our web application and let's refresh the page okay so as you can see these both the values have uh, we have made uh, into zero zero right now and we have this promote and delete functionality also working perfectly fine okay now the next thing what we need to do is okay uh, we need to we need to show uh, this promote page only to admin okay not everybody can log in and see uh, the promote page okay this see this link should not be available for other people to see see whenever whenever i log in as e coders then only we should be able to see see first of all let me log out okay when i come to this uh, promote page uh, see here uh, i'm not able to see my name okay whenever i log in okay see when i click on login see let's say eco trs e coders and uh, one two three four let's click on login and see in the login page in the home page i'm seeing uh, the e coders okay see when i go to the promote page okay here also i think i have passed uh, the username okay earlier it was not coming okay now the register page login page home page promote page and everything okay then it's fine so here the username is coming so now if this uh, person 
if he is the admin then only we should get to see the promote page okay otherwise we should not get this uh, promote page at all okay for the normal users we cannot uh, they cannot uh, promote or delete any person from the users only admin can either promote them to admin or they, he can delete from the database table okay so this functionality we are going to do next so for that what we need to do is we need to come inside a layout.html okay layout.html see these are all the links see these are all the links which we are which we have provided okay which we have provided for the our application okay and these are the routes these are the routes the login route register route promote and logout route so for this uh, what i'm going to do is uh, i'm just going to create a, a new uh, template okay uh, i'll call it as a show underscore links dot html so what this will have is uh, we'll need to create a macro okay see macros are nothing but uh, when you are creating a function or something okay you can say we are creating a macros so i'll say like this uh, uh, let's create a macro called as a show links or uh, you can ha huh, show links like this and uh, it will be like a function okay so i'm going to use this uh, function parameter like this okay and this macro okay is going to end like this okay so we are going to end macro over here okay which is called as show links okay now see insert this file okay see let's come to our layout.html and uh, see this ul okay see this is the ul which has the entire navigation links so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just uh, copy this entire thing okay i'm just going to uh, let's say uh, you just uh, cut it from here okay cut it from here see there is line number 21 okay and let's put it inside this uh, macros macros over here okay so we have successfully created a macro which contains all the links okay which contains all the links okay which get shown in the navbar.html okay that is layout.html page okay and see this was the place that line number 21 was a place okay where we need to show all those links so what we have to do is we have to come here at the top and using the same code once again okay this percentage symbol okay now we just have to mention from which file we are importing what type of macro macro okay so we have to say like this from okay now use the double quotes symbol and say so there is a show links dot html file okay from which we need to import okay import i m p o r t import a function okay whose name is called as show underscore links okay and we are not calling that function over here so that's why we are not putting any kind of parenthesis over here we are just writing the name of that particular function that's it okay and uh, this function okay this function you will have to uh, like scroll down and see guys here was our uh, links okay in between these two that was line number 23 uh, earlier it was line number 21 since we added two lines at the top it became line number 23 so here okay you need to call that particular function like this using the jinja syntax and now you are supposed to say show links and put parenthesis like this because we are calling that particular function okay and this show links function only is getting shown in the login.html register.html and home.html as well now let me just uh, save this okay so let me just show you the code once again show links is there where we have created a macro called as show links show links is nothing but like a function and that we have imported here at the top of layout.html file and we are showing here as show links function that's it okay now let me save it and let's uh, go back to our application and let's refresh everything and check out whether it is working perfectly or not see let me just log out see now also we are able to see all the links properly okay and now what we need to do is we need to go back to our html uh, we need to go back to the code okay and uh, what i'll do is i'll just say that which this macro which we have created okay this macro which we have created here okay takes a user as one of the parameters so let me say it as user okay so it might be whichever user okay we don't care so it takes a user as one of the parameters so in logout uh, layout.html file okay when you are calling this uh, okay here you need to pass that particular user okay here you need to, we need to pass that particular user and then all the from all the pages we are going to uh, pass the user variable inside this particular 
uh, show links function which we have created uh, or you can say it has macro as well okay now let's say okay uh, we need a mechanism to pass that username so first let me log out okay and then again let me log in uh, let me log in as john and let me here pass the password as uh, 1234 and let me click on login see it says password did not match let me try once again j o h n and one two three four login and we are successfully inside the home page right now okay and which says john here at the beginning okay now let's go to the promote page see john is not the admin but then also he is able to see these options where he can promote anybody to uh, admin and he can delete uh, any users we are not uh, supposed to do this particular thing okay now what we need to do is uh, we need to go back to our macro over here okay that is in uh, show links.html file okay and see guys this link sir this link okay should get shown only if the user is an admin and if there is a user first of all okay see if there is no user okay if uh, nobody has logged in then there is no need to show the logout button there is no need to show the promote button okay they just have to either log in or they have to register okay so these are the two links which uh, needs to get shown to them that's it okay so what i'm going to do is see here okay here i'm going to put a condition saying that if okay if there is uh, no user then only show the login page and the register page okay and that you can put it inside an if condition like this using this syntax okay you can say if okay if the user see if the user is not there if the not user i am going to say it like this if there is no user if not user is there okay then we need to show these things and this if condition okay i'm going to end it over here so i'm going to say end the if condition over here e and e and like this okay if the user is there okay then uh, if the user is not there okay means nobody has logged in okay then we need to show these things okay if the user is already there okay then we will we will show all these things okay like that okay if he is logged in okay then we will show these things okay so log now let me just save it and let's go to our page okay and now first log out okay then let's refresh okay now let's come to the login page okay i'll say j o h n john and password 1 2 3 4 and let's click on login okay see login has come okay now you are not seeing a uh, login or register page anymore those links are not there okay you are just uh, into promote page and logout page but when you click on logout which means the user is not there so then only he will get to see the login page and the register page that's it okay the same way we have to do the functionality for the promote as well okay see if the user is there and if that user is admin then only promote page should get shown to us or else there is no need to show this two uh, links anymore okay so let's come here and we'll take care of the promote page also like this by putting an if condition saying that see here i'll say if okay see if there is a user okay and if that user okay uh, from the database column if the admin users admin value if it is equal to equal to one okay then only we'll show this promote page to them okay and this is where that if condition is going to okay end this if condition is going to end over here like this okay now let me save it and let's check out that functionality right now okay so first let me refresh this page okay this it says a syntax error or something okay let's come back okay first let us log out and uh, it says uh, it needs to be closed the if condition end macro okay encountered unknown tag called as end macro okay uh, but currently looking else if else or else if inner most block needs to be closed so here okay here it says uh, in line number 29 i have made some kind of a mistake in app.py file okay uh, that is the home page okay from the home page uh, let's go to the layout one okay extends show links uh, we are importing the show links uh, here at the top and here show links uh, okay we are ending the macro like this okay see here it says uh, see in syntax uh, 
unknown tag and macro you probably nested a mistake uh, this ninja if else inner most block needs to get be closed up okay so let's go to our uh, file that is uh, line number 29 and show links.html okay line 29 okay and the macro over here okay so and macro mscro it looks fine okay i don't think there is any kind of error uh, but why are we getting that error uh, see it says show links at line number 29 we have made some kind of a mistake here uh, let's go back to layout html uh, i don't think there is any kind of error here uh, app.py is also fine let's come to home page okay delete and promote page also mm. i think everything is fine uh, let's check one more time okay it says here uh, let me refresh okay it says template syntax error okay syntax error unknown tag and macro okay maybe uh, okay uh, here i got the point see here in show links okay here like this okay since we have named it as macro over here okay so we need to end macro over like this okay maybe that oh no 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 sorry this uh, end end the if condition okay so that is what mistake i have made end the if condition and here it is end macro itself okay so now let's save this one and let's go to our website okay so let's uh, refresh this page and as you can see there now there is no uh, promote button as well okay see the user is not there and he is not even the admin okay first let me show you who are all the admin see in the, in our application only e coder one person is the admin of the application now if i log in as john or jane okay i'm not get i'm not going to get the promote button anymore so first let me log in as john and let me click on one two three four password and let's click on login button see as you can see we have we can go to home button and we can go to logout button so there is no more uh, login and register button uh, not even the promote page is present over there okay now let me log out okay see as soon as i clicked on logout i got the login button and the register button okay now let me go to the login page and uh, do the same thing for jane and enter the password one two three four let's click on login and as you can see we are not getting the promote button now let's log out then again login as e coders e c o e r s and one two three four is the password let's click on login and as you can see we can go to the home page we can go to promote page we can go to the logout page so let's click on the promote page and we are going to get the promote button or we can get the promote button from where we can promote this user to admin okay or we can delete that particular person from the database okay so this is what the full application okay looks like a login logout application with user authentication okay so let me click on logout okay so we are at the home page of this particular application right now okay so this is how you are going to create a full login logout applications using uh, user authentication okay thank you very much for watching this video okay i'll be posting lot more videos like this on flask application okay flask framework using python code okay please like and subscribe my channel